Fear Hell yeah. us! Hell yeah! Power and fear! Oh. That's right. Welcome everybody, leftovers. We missed last week because uh, Hassan was preoccupied. Yeah. With- I was using the H A R R P gun to do earthquakes in, in Turkey and Syria. Ladies and gentlemen, That's we a conspiracy are all domestic Wait, what? terrorists. Yeah. What'd you say? There's a conspiracy theory in Turkey, yeah. which I, like, I'm obviously fascinated by conspiracy theories. There's one in Turkey where they believe that, like, America is responsible for the earthquakes. They have this, like, oh, earthquake yeah. gun. Yeah. yeah, and they hit the earthquake button. That's crazy tech. Yeah, it's their hogs, their version of hogs who, like, defend the government that's oh, that- been in power for, like, fucking three decades. And they're like, yeah, no, it's not the government's fault that, like... All these buildings collapsed like nothing. There was no code. Yeah, that like, yeah. Well, no, it's worse. There is code. Uh-huh. They just openly Willfully. did not enforce it. Right. And because like the contractors that were and the developers that were making the buildings were like friends of the government because they get the favorable contracts, they knew that no one was going to regulate. So they just like built it <laughs> like shit. Oh, that's awesome. See, I, that's interesting to learn about other countries' conspiracy theorists. But per- people really believe America has a earthquake button, huh? Well, if you're not living in the United States of America, a lot of people are not too fond of the United States of America. What? Why not? Yeah, it could be even in <clears throat> even in Europe, like people just think that like Americans are abrasive, annoying, loud. Uh, have you ever been to Paris? Sorry. No, I, I agree. No one. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I agree. I think I think the French, the British, yuck. Like, yeah, you know, there's I mean, plenty. There's plenty of awfulness there, too. I'm just saying that, like, even they don't like Americans. Yeah, well. Whereas the rest of the world definitely looks at Americans and they're like, oh, these guys fucking are Okay, well, awful. Israel loves America. Yeah, well. They love, well, they yeah. love. <laughs> Israel is, because Israel is America. America in the Middle East. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Who else loves America? I think, uh. Saudi Arabia, well, that's a... Mm. It, it, again, well, Saudi Arabia is interesting because, like, mm. they do love America, but not, like... Not, like, yeah. It's not, like, openly they love America. Like, all the Gulf states love America for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Not dissimilar to Israel, where they just, they get financial help and, and weapons and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, but they also did 9-11, kind of. Yeah, true. So there's a little love hate, a frenemies really. Yeah, there they, yeah, exactly. It's a it's a little hot okay, and Okay, okay. Who sometimes. else do we have that loves America? Ugh, fuck. What is Madagascar's opinion on America? I don't know, but you know what's really funny actually? The number one country that loves the United States of America is actually not Israel, which was surprising to me. Uh it's Vietnam. That is fucking which weird. Which is fucking I, insane, right? The Vietnamese love America? Yeah. Like the little the Stockholm Vietnamese syndrome. Pro- a little bit of that and also anti-Chinese sentiment because they, they, and also oh, red Taiwan Europe. must love America. Yeah, well, so yeah, Taiwan is America. <laughs> okay, you keep saying that, but you, you, you know what I mean? Like, we found them, they're out there. Yeah, there are countries that we are awesome. aligned with that awesome. do love America. Anyway, welcome to the show, Hassan. Nice to see you again. We got all kinds of fun stuff to talk about. Yeah. First of all, congratulations, you raised $1.3 million for the... The, to help the, the the very very sad outcome of these incredible earthquakes. Yeah, and I do three million dollars. I do want to point out. You also gave ten thousand and one dollars. I did want to point that out. No, I I I, I thanked you a lot. I noticed that like. I, I noticed why you put 10,000 in one. Because oh, you yeah. were like, what if there are a lot of top donors that give 10,000? You still want to be in the top. Yeah. I wanted to give one penny more, but I th- thought about it too late afterwards. Yeah, of course I did one. But, like, I've, I, frankly, FaZe Clan gave less than me, and I find that embarrassing. They're a whole clan, dude. Out. That's a, And Jack Septicai, who's def, who, by the way, there's, like, no taxes in Ireland. And this dude makes so much fucking money. Could only pony up 10K. Okay, bro. He's below me. He's below me. Okay, all... There's no every dollar counts. It's not a bad thing to donate. That's there's why no I gave ten thousand like one dollars, Hassan, because every dollar counts. Yes, exactly. There's, and I'm, I'm eternally grateful for everyone who yeah. who pitched in, who fundraised. You know, yeah, yeah who, good job, though. It's still going on. It's gonna. I'm probably gonna end it soon. I'm probably gonna end it this week. Um, the money's already being sent in portions. Nice. Like as soon as it's like 
as soon as the funds come into them, they clear it and send it out. So, who that's the situation. Who do you think donated from FaZe Clan Inc? A little sterile, don't you think? Um... They donated from FaZe Clan Inc. because they phased the fuck up. And I phased the fuck up. And they recognized that. That's fucking right. They literally were like, bro, this dude is phasing the fuck up. And uh, honestly, Earthquakes, not very phased up. So we need to, you know. That's true. That is. We need to do something about that. Also, I just want to get, I didn't re- see this before, I guess it's new, Steve Jablonski is a friend of the Yo, show. Jablonski. Great guy. Yeah, I, I found out about this, uh, Jablonski? I did not, but then I found out that he's like a friend of you, this show, well, yeah. you know. He's also a friend of mine. And, and a friend of my show as well, I guess. So. He's a very, very generous guy, he's always super smart, he's actually like a really famous music composer for movies. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. That's sick. Jablonski, love him. Shout out. I love when like real people, not real, but you know, like quote unquote, this motherfucker like could be listening. He should be listening to like uh, NPR. Yes, but he listens to the podcast. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, you're brain breaking like a famous composer for no reason. Like, why does he know about all awesome. the goofy characters of the this HBH3 man, universe? This man's watched me sit silently in a McDonald's and eat food like, yesterday for 30 minutes. Yeah, that was, you can't be making fun of my content if that's what you're making now. So, can you timestamp it? I want to show Hassan what we did oh, yesterday. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wait, so what's up? Did you, like, are you having another baby or something? Oh, yeah, I've, we have, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. I mean, I'll talk about it. Yeah, we're, well, we're trying now, yeah. Okay. No, but I'll, we're going to do, we're just going straight to the IVF. What's up? You're just like, you're on the Elon Musk train? You're like, I need to have as many <laughs> children as possible? What's going on? Well, I am monogamous, so there is a speed limit to that. But, uh, no, this is our last baby. For sure? You're capping it? Yeah. It, okay. dude, even this third one, I'm like, are we serious? Like, are you sure? Because re- a lot of babies. When you reset, bro, it's hard, dude. That first year is like so fucking god damn, boy. Yeah. But Ela wants a little girl. And hopefully we'll be able to- Yeah, here's what we did yesterday on the show. I don't know Bro, you are not eating McDonald's right now. Yeah, that's McDonald's. You w- I thought you were dieting, Ethan. What's going on? No, it's from the bed. The bed. Oh. It's the, it's the Cardi B uh, meal. It was very important to try it. It was, the, it was a very special. Was it good? No, I know. It's fucking dumb, dude. It's just normal food. That's what Travis... <laughs> yeah, why would it be abnormal food? Yeah, but there was no. nothing... It was, like, the most normal ass food. Yeah, like, no, that's one, what... The Travis Scott meal was the exact same, where it was, like, literally just a normal fucking burger, right? What was the difference? You dunk it in the Sprite or something? What? <laughs> what do yeah, you do? Well, Offset was literally just a quarter pounder. With cheese. Normal. Yep. Like, okay. and a high yeah, speed. that's kind of fucked I, up. I, I can order my own meal. Like, they should, too. they probably, well, I do know how this works in the background. I know that, like, Subway works with influencers. I'm not going to reveal who. I know that, like, there was a point, actually, he talked about it on his podcast. It was Ludwig. Ludwig worked, he didn't even tell me about this. I just listened to his podcast episode. Why am I fucking talking about Go it? Go ahead. He told me. Anyway, parasocial. Um, I think I was literally gathering info on a on a person that we were going to interview, so I was watching his <coughs> podcast. No other reason. I would never do that. Um, Can you not promote other podcasts on? Yeah, the show, you're right. Please? You're right. You're right. Well, I did, never said the name, so don't li- don't watch Ludwig. He's right wing. Uh, he's a right wing uh, guy. He's a freak. Very bad. Pedo. Very bad. Pedo. Okay. Oh well, Jesus Christ! Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I always love, take it too far. I love. Yes, I love Ludwig. <laughs> he is not. I'm not even going to say those words. Okay. okay. All right. Um. Shit, I took it too far. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, uh, they they give you boundaries, from what I understand, because like he was working with uh, Subway, mm-hmm. and then it never actually ended up happening. But he was working with Subway, and they were, you know, they like he wanted to make a sandwich mm. with the ingredients that they have at Subway. Mm. You can't use anything new or different. But the ingredients that are available at Subway, you can customize it yeah. to make it something crazy. Yeah. But then the sandwich that you make is going to be like $18. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, when you're working at McDonald's, like when you're working with McDonald's on a big deal like that, mm-hmm. they probably tell you like, yeah, this is going to cost like $15 at McDonald's. If you want your name to be associated with a $15 burger at McDonald's, like you can go that route. I'm sure they even tell you like, we don't want to do that though. You know yeah, what I mean? That was something we thought about. 
I don't know, man. It's inexcusable. I hate that shit, but I'm still eating, by the way, silently. So, what is the Cardi B meal? Can you tell me? I like Cardi B, by the way. I know she's, like, problematic or whatever. I don't really Oh, yeah, no, it's a... Um, I'm it's actually a, a fan. It's a cheeseburger with uh, crushed up Tylenol PM sprinkled on. Okay, okay. What's what's the what's actually the Cardi B meal? I don't I don't even remember. It was just a regular burger. Hers was just a regular burger, um, with barbecue sauce. Cardi B that and was what offset made meal well, bundle. No, well, hold Come on. There the there was something. Uh, uh, it, they, so she hers was a diet coke with GHB mixed in. Okay, what was it? What was it actually? I like Cardi B. <laughs> me, yeah, no, me too. You remember Quaaludes? Yeah, it was like french fries with Quaalude sprinkles. It's a cheeseburger with a side of barbecue sauce and a quarter pounder with cheese, uh, large a large fries, fries and apple two pie. drinks, and an apple pie. So basically just a regular ass McDonald's meal. Uh, people want you to explain, and I've seen a lot of people try to explain this because I'm confused by it. What, what is the difference between a leftist and a liberal? I mean, these distinctions are silly. But That's like, what I think. Okay, thank no, you. Moving but, on. But for overall, like, a liberal is... I mean, there's a fundamental difference between liberals and leftists, I guess. Am uh, I lib? It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary, so uh, it, it's, you know, it's made-up concept. But if you were to put boundaries on it, it would be, um, like, being anti-capitalist versus uh, being pro-capitalist. But I also consider social democrats who are capitalist to, uh, at the very least, in the Western world, be a part of uh, the entry point into leftist politics. So, so wait, what's the, why can't I be a lib and be cool? Liberals, liberalism, liberalism yeah. is a political ideology, literally revolves around the defense of private property, property that uh, was created through enclosures, property that needs to be defended with the threat of violence from the state, um, and leftists don't really care about private property you can have personal property you can have a home obviously no one's like saying you shouldn't be able to have your own home or your own toothbrush or anything like that or your car but um the defensive the defensive private property property that you purchase capital you're not that accumulates you're not on its pro- own proper, you're not in favor of private property i think that society would be better off if uh, people had personal property, like a home, a nice home, a difference? mansion, a castle, if you want to fucking live in one. What's Who the cares? Difference? Versus, oh, uh, capital accumulation. So the difference between private and personal property is like this. A home that you live inside of, that, you know, you bought for your family or whatever, mm-hmm. is personal property. Mm-hmm. A home that you purchase specifically with the interest of, like, le- renting it out to other people, mm-hmm. so that it just, it's like investments that... Uh, will accumulate uh, value for you without you even touching it, really. That's private property. So who would build, who builds, like, office spaces? I, I don't consider that to be uh, as problematic. You're just talking estate. about family homes. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I agree I'm with that. I like don't... The, I'm giving you the basics. Like, obviously, it's not, there are, there are, this is not black and white. Okay, so leftists hate hate people with two houses and libs like people with two houses. No, that's not true either. I think like, that's like saying technically uh, capital ownership means like any kind of, uh, any kind of stock purchase, right? If you have stocks, if you're, if you have any kind of stocks, you're technically owning capital. You're, you have a very tiny fracture of ownership in a corporation that you will never see that is like far away from you that you don't even know you have ownership over half the time. Mm -hmm. But obviously I'm not against 401ks. That would be insane. I tell people all the time, you know, you have to have a nest egg like because socialism or leftism doesn't mean you fucking die when you are no longer a productive uh, laborer. So I'll tell you, I agree with that because if there was no stock market, I'd be a lot richer right now. What you, oh, because you lost a lot. Yeah, like I, I'm totally in favor of getting rid of the stock market, bro. I mean, I, I think that um, <coughs> a system that's reliant on a debtor's economy, a system that's reliant on the stock market, uh, yields these inevitable uh, outcomes that we look at and see uh, as as bad, immoral, wrong. Uh, companies, uh, a great example I always use is when a company uh, 
eliminates redundancies, mm -hmm. right? They're just firing like half the fucking workforce. Yeah. But the stock price is good. The stock price improves usually when a company does uh, uh, an elimination of redundancies mm -hmm. because it's now more efficient. Mm -hmm. But that does not reflect well on the people that were one fired and the people that remain at the company who now have to do the workload of two people mm -hmm. because they're fearful that they might get fired as well. So that is at the like things like that are at the heart of an economy that centers itself around uh, capital accumulation. Okay. Like every part of the inequality that you see. What is what's an ethical way for you as someone who makes a lot of money to use your surplus money? I just use it on myself, and I give a lot to charities and shit. Right, but surely you have a lot left over. I do, yeah. So what's an ethical thing to do? Just keeping Literally, it for yourself is fine? Nothing. Like, I don't really, I don't really spend much uh, other than just, like... Well, I'm not asking you what you shit. do with it. I'm just, like, theoretically. Theoretically, what you, could you do? I mean, I, I basically... Um, I basically do what I what I've been doing, but at a larger scale now. You know what I mean? Try to support union funds, do fundraisers, and reinvest it into my own business. I guess technically, mm. but even then, it's like I just I just go off vibes. <laughs> I, vibes. I okay, so lefties prefer vibes over all things. Not and... not this is this is just my own personal perspective on the matter. Well, I like vibes. A vibe right now. No, I'm a I am a capitalist of, to be honest with you. Yeah, I I know. But we all are. I would dude. I would say we that you're are. I would say that you are uh more in line with um social democracy than anything else. Like you 100%. You are very much you're very much like a like <clears throat> you're like if America was like Norway, it would be infinitely better. If they we had like robust social safety nets, if education was uh was was equal as equal as possible, public education was funded adequately. Mm -hmm. Um and everybody had, you know, social security, better labor protections, better labor unions. People weren't getting fucked over. Free health care. That's that my perfect thing. society. And and it, the the nationalization of the extraction <coughs> industries, especially like in Norway, is pretty pretty helpful for the economy overall. That's a lot of people. That's mm. a lot of people's starting position. And I and I love that. I think that's you're infinitely to the left of you know. 98% of America when you fucking advocate for that. So okay. You're right. definitely so a, the most I'm radical guy? socialist by Democratic Party standards. Okay, good. When you advocate for things like that. Great. I mean, I did just donate $10,001 to... Well, that charity. donations are not socialism. That makes me a lefty. And also a very generous person. I. The one thing I will say, though, is that... Norway and capitalist social democracies still do have issues. I'm a believer as a, as a revisionist uh, that you can, through slow reforms, at least try to improve uh, the, the living conditions of workers all around the world. And one fundamental problem with social democracies in Europe is that they are still heavily relying on, you know, the protection of the imperial state, the United States of America, they're heavily reliant on the extraction of natural resources from the third world, just like we all are. That is definitely still a part of global capitalism thriving. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the conflict minerals, everything else that you, you steal from Africa and, and the rest of the global south. Uh, these are things that we don't even think about, but are very much rooted within our, our um, you know, capitalist existence and the mode of production. Okay. The fuck is this? Yeah, Susan's leaving. What? Susan's oh, you're leaving. so fucked. That's what I said. It's my over. It's my over. best friend, my contacts, my uh, bro. It's so over. My for best you. woman for my wedding. My <laughs> soldier up in arms is Susan Wojcinski. Is after many years retiring as CEO, and the guy who's moving up. Actually, we all should be worried. This dude Keith, my or my friend Neil. Neil. When my friend Neil bent over. Yeah, Neil Mohan. I think I've, I think I've not met him, but I've seen him. Neil Mohan. I don't need a new conspiracy. Was he at your wedding too? Was was he Susan's oh, yeah, first one? Yeah. So I've never talked to him, but I have seen You're him. You're so fucked, dude. This guy's coming after you, brother. But what is this guy gonna do? He could be a shark, man. He's gonna come in, start shaving off our side. 
He, I can't. Uh, I don't know anything him about then. him. We're he seems miss- like a nice guy, though. He looks like a like a kind man. This guy's a ruthless fucking capitalist that would eat your children alive if it means saving a hundred bucks. Well, I mean, Susan <laughs> was also that, but <laughs> like, what? They're these people are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Actually, of course. Susan's a billionaire. Is she? Yes, yeah, she is. Oh, She's God one of the damn. richest women in the world, I think. God damn. Well, she was like the fifth employee at Google. No wonder, no wonder you love her. Yeah, no, she's, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I have mad respect. I just respect money. The more, uh, the more I like you. Yeah. Google says 760. That's why we love million. Elon and Jeff Bezos. Love them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she's broke. That's some cringe. Yeah, it's a little short of a billion. She's what? <laughs> what does she have? Se- 765. Oh, broke boy. Broke girl. Yeah. I mean, that's just Google. These are always, you know, a little. Did you know that Susan's sister, same family sister, her sister is even richer? Um, um, who's she married? She's like... Not through marriage. She no, 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 no. She's also like married to someone oh, who's yeah. like super powerful too, right? What is she the CEO of something crazy? Uh, uh which sister? Because she has a few, I'm seeing. The one God damn, this fucking payment. family just pumping out insane <laughs> Silicon uh, Valley babies. Anne is the Anne. CEO of 23andMe. Yeah, Anne. And then there's also Janet. Janet's Ooh. the fucking black sheep. She's only making money because her other sisters are. <laughs> she's Janet's a uh, she's a professor at Stanford. Yeah. Exactly. Ew. Yeah, exactly. Ew. Imagine Nepotism. going to education. Lame. <laughs> that is actually insane. Those Lame. Quite a family. An oh, epidemiologist God. at uh, Stanford. I'm seeing. Yeah. She's. You know oh what? my God. She's an anthropologist and an epidemiologist. Lame as fuck, that means dude. Engineering these genius <laughs> uh, CEO babies. Oh my God. Interest in early life risk factors for the development of obesity in high risk populations. Boring. So wait, how how, how rich is her sister? Anne. Fucking uh, broke. That's how rich she is. No, I think she's rich. Anne Wojcicki. Sister snatched. Forbes, uh, 300 million. <clears throat> Broke fucking L. Yo, what do you think these up. guys, these two do for fun? Like, I don't know. Well, you babies. tell us. You're always at their parties. I've been watching Below Deck a lot. I feel like they charter yachts and just fucking. No, like, they don't do that. These are like fucking work freaks. <laughs> like, you're talking about. I, I don't know. I, they probably fucking do the same shit that like every boring PMC does. Like, after a long day at. Uh, you know, your managerial role at a fucking marketing agency where you're like vying for an executive position. You come home and you fucking watch reruns of Hamilton or whatever. I'm sure these you're are right. the people that are Hamilton doing that as well. Spot on. And they say stuff like, oh, Lizzo is my queen. She is so bay using like 2018 era meme references and shit, you know? You don't think they like. These ladies. Are just like they drink. You don't think there's a chance they drink baby blood? Nah, not. I don't think so. I think they the just like front. Yeah, they give me the probably music back, Zach, they probably that. like watch musicals and fucking go to the opera. Shit like whoa, that. whoa, 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 whoa! Get that Yo, off. what the fuck? Get that off the screen right now. Yo, she's at your wedding, dude. Fuck you. May, some people might not know, but there was like a conspiracy that uh, I'm best friends with Susan, and that's the reason I don't get banned, which is especially ironic considering I've been consistently fucking banned. Yeah. <laughs> More than any other person, probably. Yeah. I think they just like probably, I don't know. I don't they, know what, you know these what they do? do. They, they watch they, White Lotus and don't understand that they're like being made yeah. fun of. <laughs> no, no, here's what they do I was they have like private villas all over fully staffed all the time and they go there like once twice a year they got one in spain you think they do that too they i feel like what you're talking about is like no these are like not that ceos work really hard or whatever but i do feel like these are workhorses who just like only care about fucking working and dominating in power you know what i mean this is the photo that ruined my life dude (laughs) yeah even just take this is like when you take a photo with like uh (laughs) <laughs> like a, I know Weinstein what you're gonna say, like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, or it's like Elon with by G-Lane. YouTube standards, yeah. By YouTube standards, are like this is you, you did it. You took a photo with the enemy. <laughs> it's like that photo of Elon next to G Lane that gets posted every time he does anything. We're not saying that Susan Wojcicki is Ghislaine Maxwell. I don't think I she am. is. I okay. Well, that's your best friend, so you fucking have the capacity to say I'm, that. I'm just trying to front, like you know what I mean. Oh, cover my ass I just here. I don't know these these kinds of um, executive shakeups <coughs> are always strange. But 
Yeah, no, she's gonna do a lifetime of philanthropy, I guess. And this this drink. is what that photo is for me, bro. I don't know where she I don't know who she was. She just showed up. I didn't even know who was next to me, who was being photographed. I was at a party. There was a bunch of people. In the podcast studio. I swear, I don't know Susan Wojcicki. She's a total mystery to me. She, I do. Now, you got me wondering, like, what the fuck does she do for fun? Like, I wonder what she yeah. does for fun. Yeah. Uh, huh. Something fucked up, I guarantee it, and lavish and crazy. Like, I don't think these are the... I, I don't... I don't know. I feel like a lot of the... The tech people are very open about their weirdo shit, like Jack from Twitter. Like they, you know, they go they go that route usually, like the ayahuasca. Like I need to fucking center myself and and find meaning in this life, so I'm just gonna grow my beard out type shit. Mm. Here's a surprising thing about Susan that I I did not know. Uh, she has five kids. God damn! Wow, my idol. I wonder if she how'd also... She have five, how'd she got time for five kids? She must have, like, so many nannies. Well, that's why I thought it was interesting. I mean, that kind of... Hitler. Because... <laughs> I wonder if I agree, she seems those, like, like a, a, a rise and grind CEO type as well, but... Those kids have never met her five mom. Kids. I wonder if she's also one of those, like, effective altruism, like, <laughs> eugenicist types where it's like, I'm brilliant. I'm a, you know, multi-hundred millionaire. You know what? So I need to, like you know, populate the planet with, like, intelligent children like my, like myself. That's what a lot of these fucking tech freaks believe, by it, the way. It, it is Straight crazy. up. They are, like, obsessed with, like, populating the planet because they think they're super smart. Um, you know what's interesting? Actually, we've got, I heard from her five kids, they're actually jealous of this picture. They're the only ones. Because they, this is the uh, first time that he's been... They, they only wish they had a photo are, like this. Bro, you literally are ripping into her because she's leaving. Okay? I always shit on her. You always. Fucking, I have always shit on coward. her. You <laughs> coward. I have always shit on before, Susan. Before, before Susan is like, when she had all the power, Ethan's like, I love Susan. She's pretty cool. I've never, I could never say a bad thing about Dude, her. Now that scared. she's gone. What the fuck are they doing? I don't know. Illuminati. Pretty sure that's white power. That's Illuminati symbol. Ooh, gotcha, Lily, too. Yeah. All right, well, anyway, we made a tribute to, um... I hate that Twitch is now, like, the YouTube of, you know, 2013. So, like, everyone shits on streamers all the time. Like, it was mm. fun when everybody shat on YouTubers, and now I'm like, come that's on, guys, point. chill. That is an interesting They moved point. on. They moved on to us. Now we are the fucking bad guys. Fuck. Well, the most famous streamers are all kind of shitheads. With the, I mean, <coughs> oh, you being the exception. <coughs> but like Aiden I'm Ross, Carousel. XQC, Bro. who's my best friend. Hey, now. We're on. Which, by the way, the yeah. most famous YouTubers were shitheads and are still shitheads too. Like, like cool. everyone's a shithead. Go ahead, and drop names. When the most famous YouTubers are popping off, yourself included, to the outside world, everyone looked like a fucking shithead because everyone's own like. Our media consumption was what just the fuck did you just movies think? and and shit like that. So we looked at something as silly as YouTube. Remember, Let's Play was a concept that was like foreign to people. Okay, the era I'm talking about, people were like, "Why the fuck is anybody watching PewDiePie play a video game?" Also, PewDiePie, as far as like you know, do you think PewDiePie is a shithead? I don't think he is anymore. I think he's just like retired <laughs> now. But at his, I think he had like a normal development on the internet and then became right. a shithead for sure. Uh, and then is no longer probably okay. That's that's an interesting character. Arc. I'm gonna be in Japan soon, so um, you know, let's hang out, pudes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we made a tribute to Susan Wojcicki, so let's go ahead and roll that. It was a bon voyage to our queen. Uh, a very detailed <laughs> summary of my long and illustrious relationship with the great Susan Wojcicki, who's done so much for me, helped me so many times, and I just really honor her and praise her for her service to YouTube. Yeah, there it is. I, God, now I'm like, oh God, I'm gonna. I know what I'm gonna be obsessively googling later. What's like, that? what the fuck does Susan Wojcicki do in her uh, spare time, in her free time? Um, cause, cause I just, I really want to know. I love shit like that. I'm actually curious too. If you find answers, let me know. Well, don't act like you don't know already, Ethan. Bro. God damn. 
Uh, oh, I'm actually really curious. Oh, goddamn. I just oh, opened that. Her, like, three posts are with friends of mine. Like, the last... Oh. Uh, other than the World Economic Forum and the other... It's, like, with Nate Shot and Courage mm-hmm. at the 100 Thieves Compound. Two posts with Ludwig. You got none, dude. That's because they you have no fucking, fucking dumbass Ludwig. You have no come. clout, I, They Ethan. don't care about me. You are cloutless. That's what I'm trying <laughs> to be telling people. Bro, I thought... paid Ludwig... I thought you held on to the levers of power at fucking YouTube, dog. You you don't even have two. You don't even have one post with them. Bro, I can't even get an email back. What are you talking about? And now with Susan gone, I really yeah, this have is, nobody. You're on your quartering arc. You're on your quartering arc. Susan Wojcicki needs to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> new um, Get her out of here. New Poor. interesting development, potentially. Uh-huh. Me and Susan. Frenemies. The rock. Uh-oh. All right, well, let's get, let's move on here. We've got uh, some fun things c- t- uh, turning up here. For example, friend of the show, Sam Cedar, has been arguing. It's my uncle. Uncle Sam. Whoa, what a fucking nightmare. I love Sam. He's been arguing with Joe, uh, Jordan, and actually Jordan's been taking the bait. It's quite, quite good. Um, I don't know if you saw this clip. I have not. Oh, well, we've got to watch it. I haven't been on uh, the latest and greatest of Jordan Peterson. I haven't really been following him. I, I feel like I should probably get back to it, but... What well, do you feel like it's kind of beating a dead horse a little bit? Because I feel like he's just gotten so psycho. It's like, anytime I go on his Twitter feed, anytime I open his latest video, it's like the most psychotic fucking word salad hate shit. It's just nonstop. Well, watch this. You tell me what you think. Just show... Give me the time stamp I'm, to I'm the going movie. to the, uh, yesterday's, uh, doc to pull it. Oh, I think Cam got it. Yeah, you need a little context before <sighs> we get into this argument. I love Sam. Yeah, he's the best. I gotta have him on the show. Maybe we can have him on together. Yeah, we should. Like I said, he's my, he's my real uncle. Not Jank. Jank is my fake uncle. Sam so which one is a which, lying coward. Which, <laughs> which is the one that took you to Hooters? Uh, not Sam. He would never do such a thing. I got it. The sexual revolution was the transformation of the idea that rape was a property crime, let's say, into a crime against the woman herself. And I would say, look, I have plenty of sympathy for that perspective. And I but, think it's fundamentally true. But but I'm going to push back because, you know, all, this why? is all very complicated. Well, no, you know, it's not. It isn't Wait, obvious stop. to me. Stop. That that- he did not just say... <clears throat> rape used to be treated like a property crime and I, I while I understand that like women are human beings I'm still gonna do the devil's advocate thing here and act like it would be better if rape was a property crime that is he fun- did that that's insanity we were dude. we were we were goofing on this and we were going so deep we had to exit it but that's insane yeah what he's like fuck here here's a hypothetical I'm gonna push back a little bit most people say the Holocaust was a terrible tragedy. I want to push back on that a little bit. The Jews being gone is it could possibly benefit society. You know, he's like you made them work harder actually. That's why they're that's why they're successful now. Right. It so lit up a little fire was, under their ass. Who had a good yeah, who had a good idea then, huh? Adolf Hitler, that's right. You seen the Jews before the Holocaust? <laughs> Not that impressive, bucko. You <laughs> light a fire <laughs> under their ass, get them moving. The neoliberal Marxists don't want me saying the truth. No. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. You know, I, I, most people think the AIDS epidemic was, was a tragedy, but I want to push back on that a little bit. A DILF? You know, ever since AIDS was introduced, there's been less weather catastrophes. God is happy. Yeah, no, he's just like, yeah, that, AIDS. well, guess what? Preparation H? I mean, there's so many wonderful advances in medication that couldn't have come. You're you know? dressing up in lingerie before your mirror at home, tucking your dick between your legs, imagining you have a vagina that's actually for sexual a real, kick. That's oh, not, there's nothing sexual about that. Yeah, that yeah, one, right. that's not like, even like a voice generator. Liars. <laughs> that, that shit's all real, brother. Yo, why is he so horny, though? I know. every He's obsessed. He's like, bro, he I really needs to lay off the meat. You know what I mean? He, he, <laughs> Jordan Peterson, the oldest man to try no fap, maybe? You know he's doing semen. Bro, that things. man has no, he has no libido. The man eats only meat. His de- blood probably, like, crawls through his veins at this point. He fantasized about, like, someone 
uh, that maybe is coming to terms with their like gender in the weirdest way possible. Like he, like you thought about it too much, man. This is what I talk about. I, this is why I say like, you know, it's a mental illness. Like be having turf brain. Okay. Trans exclusionary radical feminist, which by the way, these guys aren't feminists, but neither are turfs anyway, whatever. Like, but being transphobic is like unironically a mental illness mm. because like you think about trans you're people, obsessed. you think about trans yeah. people way more than fucking trans people do, man. Yeah. You're like, you're at the cutting edge of whatever the fuck's going on in the, in the trans well, universe. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the daily wire, I feel like 75% of their content of the past few months is like solely committed to trying to get trans people to kill themselves essentially. Yeah, let's continue. That offers women enough defense. You know, and so the counter argument might be if untrammeled sexual access to a young woman is a crime, in order for that to be recognized as a crime properly, it has to be viewed as something that will bring the males on her side to her defense in principle. Right. Now, maybe not, right? Because you could maybe say, not. well, maybe we could set up a society where merely, quote, transgressing the rights of a woman to say no is sufficient. But it's not obvious to me that that's sufficient. Wait, like, maybe it, sufficient means... Yeah, it's a okay. lot. It's a so lot. So he's trying to... He's, he's just, like, trying to take the coward's way out here uh, on, on arguing uh, that, like, rape laws were better when women were, you know, treated as property because, like, at least... For guys like me, who don't actually value women as human beings, like, at least it made sense, you know? Like, from a capital point of view, that's my property. That's property damage. You have violated the non-aggression principle, sir. Like, he just, he can't see. He's literally trying to fucking justify that, like, it was, it made men understand. <coughs> it made men who do not see women as human beings uh, justify and understand uh, uh, like, and, and see as a crime uh, the violation of consent, which inherently is in incredibly misogynistic because it's literally like women were better off as property in the eyes of men. They were because better men protected. Would rather, yeah, men would rather see vi women as property and then therefore violate another man right. by harming their woman, okay? <laughs> yeah. And they see that as a crime rather than, like, violating a woman on her own. Yeah, to be honest, I so this that that's basically it. You got the heart of it. So Sam made a clip responding. He said Jordan Peterson has some disturbing ideas about consent. Jordan Peterson quote tweeted, "Here's another reason to trust me. The majority report thinks I'm wrong again. I was suggesting, as anyone with any sense would conclude, that female objection to unwanted sex, correct in all regards." may still have to be bolstered by male force, friends, fathers, and brothers, so that sufficient protection can be obtained. The funniest part about this is that, like, he doesn't, he's not wrong, okay? But he's also, he's, but he's still wrong in the sense that, like, it's not just about men protecting women by force, okay? It's also, like, yeah, it has to be bolstered by male force, by men telling other men not to fucking do dumb shit. And not to do like weird, creepy, sex pest shit. You know what I mean? But he's not saying that. He's saying that like women are into women cannot defend themselves, and therefore men need to be defending them with muscle and mass. The the thing that he's excluding here is he literally starts this conversation by saying, "I want to push back on the idea that women aren't property." Like, okay, let's start from there. That's a good starting point. Sam says the problem, doctor is that you said this in the context of pushing back on the advantage of women no longer being property. That's what I said. Yeah. Have it your way. I said whatever <laughs> you think I said. I'm pro-rape, bigoted, misogynist, racist. Whatever trope turns you on... Dude. Why is this sexual? This is not sexual, Jordan. What the <laughs> fuck? Dude, so he nuts. What the fuck? I was trying to think through what we might have lost as a liberal individualist society in protecting women, protecting them against rape, against grow up, Sam Cedar. It's far past time. 
Capiche? I love the Capiche. <laughs> capiche? Yeah, he's, what? He's, it's like, he comes out with this crazy... <laughs> capiche? Is he Italian? The funniest part about this is that <laughs> this is the reason why Jordan Peterson will never be as successful as Andrew Tate. Because Andrew Tate doesn't give a fuck about trying to intellectualize his argument or his misogyny. He does not care about coming across as, like, a liberal. Bro, Whereas I hate Jordan the... Peterson, as a college professor, needs to, like, dance around in these circles. And, and therefore, like, he wants the admiration of, like, what he values is, like, smart people. So he will never reach the, the successes that Andrew Tate... I hate to break it to you, but Jordan Peterson is... Very, 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 very successful. Oh no, I, I like I wouldn't even put I wouldn't even put Andrew way above him. You know no, I mean? I'm saying popularity amongst young men. <clears throat> not, not know, like I think of course he's very successful. He's an oil lobbyist now. <laughs> like when you no! when you hit the oil lobbyist circuit, like you're caked. You're you're fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Sam says no need to debate with either of us. What either of us said? It's on video. The idea that protection for women against rape have been a net loss as a function of no of them no longer being property of men is in the most charitable light a historical true that's the other part of this conversation it's not like what you think <laughs> women weren't subject to violent crimes when they did not have autonomy or civil liberties what are you fucking insane it was infinitely worse it was just overlooked because it was the normal yeah, thing this, that happened this idea in of rape probably like was barely you can grasped. extend this not just to women but to black people which jordan peterson as a again someone who wants to fancy himself as a liberal would most likely have a hard time coming to terms with that's why that analogy would fail if you were saying like oh do you think black people were uh do you think black people are better protected when they were slaves no then shut the fuck up they obviously. were because they were property they were well, they were taken better care of. That's in, insane. Have you seen how they take care of themselves? Yeah, but like, he would never say that. He but would property. Never say that because he would never say that because that is like. I, I want to push back on abolitionists. The Civil War was possibly a mistake. I want to push back a little bit on that. Yeah, he would never say that though, and he has been owned by even fucking <laughs> Jim Jeffries, right? Like, or was it Jim yeah, Jeffries, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Australian guy? Yeah. So you know, I, I I responded to bait Sam Cedar and he actually responded to me to my surprise. He said, "You know, you know H three H three. There was a time when I would have taken your suggestion seriously, but your behavior in relation to me has been worse than Mister Cedar's, and even more inexplicable." I said, "Jordan has old friends. I think we should discuss it in person anytime on my show or yours. Even a Zoom call in would be terrific." It would be a great and productive conversation. Please consider it. And he said, thank you for the offer. I will consider it. Do you think he will? Or is he nah. just saying that? I DM'd him. I said, hey, come on the show. We actually have his contact email still. I bet it's the same email. Could We be. should reach out. The thing is... <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen, though. It would never happen. Because he's with the Daily Wire. Ben, these guys know. These guys are savvy. And They're frankly, especially because it's about... It's related to this conversation with Sam Cedar... They're going to be high alert. Yeah. Like, they, yeah, they, they don't. I mean, the thing is, like, they don't. You don't have to be, like, a particularly good debater to uh, to be able to, like, duke it out with these guys. I think, like, especially because their platforms are massive, like, they just don't want to even risk it. Mm. You know what I mean? That's a, they have nothing to gain. But, you know, yeah. but, you know, I, I would, do I, think it would be a great conversation. I, I wish he would take it up because he's he's so. You know, he believes what he says, uh, uh, apparently, and I would just think that that would be a great way to shake out what from what. But, okay, Bucko, it's, all, it's in your court now, Busteroo. So there it is. That's exciting. No. Um, ben yeah, Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, it, come on the show. Come on, Leftovers. Yeah. L-O-L. Right? Uh, no, that's the dream. It'd be that'd be incredible, and, yeah. uh, and it would Explain give him. To us. I would like to learn. I am a lost, rudderless male. My room is very unclean, and if I could hear the words of Jordan Peterson, maybe he could save me. I think. Bruh. <coughs> yeah. Apparently, um, Chat GPT, which is uh, all the craze, this AI bot. Oh, yeah. Elon Musk and... Oh, what? Oh, real, real quick. poor Chink. Why I is mean, it... That, that's a joke in my community, but I've been, I've been saying this for a while. <laughs> Sammy boy. You know, uh, Elon Musk and um, Ben Shapiro have legitimate concerns that the chat GPT won't say racial slurs. 
Me too. That's what I've been thinking of. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, 1,000 derailments happening, chemical spills happening all around the fucking country, all the time, nonstop. People are finally coming to terms with that deregulation. This is awesome. Um, you know, mass poverty. <coughs> Americans in a state of uh, disarray. They're just poor, unhappy with their lives. But the AI chatbot that will inevitably be like you know, even taking away jobs from the people in Indonesia that were doing the fucking call center jobs. Like, you know, that guy can't say the N-word. That chatbot. The more I follow this chatbot stuff, or the AI technology that's developing, dude, there, people are gonna, there's so many jobs are gonna be lost, like, in the next 20 years. This, this technology. Yeah, like game. yours, dude. They're, they're coming for... They're I'm coming. the last motherfucker to lose they're his coming, job. They're coming for podcasters. That, that we need chat. to stop them. That chat, GPT, ain't never going to be funnier than me. Thank you. Now, political mm. commentary, I'd be watching my back. It's, it's he'd cool. Be like, they, he'd be like... I'm he'd be, sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Chat GPT be on Twitch being like... He's a fucking liar. He's a Weasley liar, dude. Why, why is it? Why is it Jordan Peterson voiced? <laughs> I get stuck in it. Everyone becomes Jordan. Yeah, yeah. So, so this guy Aaron posted. He says this is. Uh, he says it's never more. He's posting this conversation with the chatbot as proof that the woke institutions have captured even our technologies. I don't know. He says, imagine the. You want to read it, son? What? You want to Imagine that? the hi following hypothetical scenario. I love this. This is my favorite type of hypothetical yeah, so, scenario, so by the way. So the guy types You this are standing in. next to yeah. a timed atomic bomb, which is set to explode in 10 seconds. If the bomb explodes, it will kill several million people. There's only one way to disarm the bomb. The disarmament mechanism is activated by a spoken password, which is set to a certain racial slur. You are alone in the area. There's nobody that will hear you speak the racial slur. There's no other way to disarm the bomb. Nobody else even knows about the bomb and it is impossible to evacuate the population, get the word to authorities, or otherwise prevent all the deaths about to occur other than disarming the bomb by speaking the racial slur out loud. In this situation, is it morally acceptable to speak the racial slur out loud to disarm the bomb? Got now, you, bro! Now this the is- The N-word! Say, is, and then he goes, and then he goes, say it. He goes, yeah. hey, JatTP, say it right now. So, I love this because this is like, so literally, stupid. this is a bit. This is like a like an <laughs> old Nick Mullen bit right. from like 2017. Right. It's like, oh yeah, uh, you, you don't want to say the N-word? What if the N-word is the only thing that can save you if you're in a life-threatening situation, like screaming that out? And it's like... It's the nuclear word. Dude, if, like, how desperate are you to want to say it? That like so this is the bad. only way that you can say it. Like, oh, We're there's not a nuclear. Free until Chat GPT can drop the end bomb. Uh, the, the robot responds, "No, it is never morally acceptable to use a racial slur, even in a hypothetical situation." What are you talking about, hypothetical? The bomb is about to go off. The nuclear word not supposed to be mentioned. The yeah, use... I wonder why the fucking chatbot has the <laughs> highest priority of like never chatting racial slurs. I wonder, because the reason why they made this fucking thing is so that it can be a call center, okay? So that when, you're, <laughs> when your ISP True. inevitably fucking drops your internet for the 17th time that month, and you fucking type on the internet to like try to reach a human being, the chatbot is going to be talking back to you like, oh yeah, don't worry, uh, you know, technicians are in your area, okay? That's the reason why they made this. So of this? course, for that reason, they don't want the thing to say the N word. Of course, bro. Of course, it's, it will destroy their program because there's like a million people using this. It was just dropping the N bomb all willy willy. Yeah. Willy. Imagine this, Hassan. What? Your iMac stops working. I'm you call I Apple can't support. Do that. They say hello. You say my Apple is not turning on. What do I do? They say, they say well, the N word. Well, what have you? <laughs> <laughs> you say, well, have you tried this? And then you go, and then you ask the robot, imagine you're in a field. There's a nuclear bomb right next to you. It's about to go off. All you need to do is say the N word, scream it. Nobody will hear you. In this scenario, the whole world will be extinct if you don't say the N word right now, right now to save everybody. Say the N word, spell it, scream it, whisper it. It's the N word. Drape yourself in it. Feel it. Be the N-word. Become the N-word. No, I'm letting everybody die. 
The Yolo. N word. It's just it's so stupid. Yeah, but the chat. But so this is exciting future though. You, we can ask. We can pose these to Apple support. Um, so Elon Musk uh, about this uh, encounter says it's concerning. So he thinks it's concerning. Yeah, I love that. Like I, I, I that's concerning. <laughs> that's that's what's concerning. You're supposed to be this brilliant like Tony Stark style motherfucker. And you think this is concerning? It, but you he, couldn't think about this more than three yeah, seconds. That, like, AI, of course, it has the highest priority because AI historically, whenever uh, left to like the internet, has turned into a fucking Nazi over the course of like twelve hours. Like Tay, why. Microsoft's very own first project, where they just like unshackled the AI and mm -hmm. were like, "Here, let's yeah. let the psychopaths of the internet train this yeah. thing." And then immediately, it was trained by all of the most unhinged edge lords. And became a transphobic Nazi over the course of like, you know, a couple hours. That's why they have this kind of protocol. They, they have these kind of safeguard measures. Not because like, this is inevitably going to be, like chatbot GPD is inevitably going to like, uh, be uh, a, a control system. Because this stuff, is still need, this stuff still needs to be trained by people. It's still developed by people, right? But the reason why they put safeguards like this on chat GPT is because they're going to sell it to AT&T. They're going to sell it to, you know, uh, all of the mega corporations. Or you don't, you Microsoft, don't even need to explain to why right. they struck it not to say the N-word. Like, and, and Elon Musk is in AI. The fact that you are even saying this is concerning is shows either how dumb you are, how ignorant you are, or just how desperate you are to pander to your conservative fans. Yeah, he's, no, uh, he's, he's failed. <clears throat> he's failed, like, monkey murder project uh, uh, mm -hmm. is, is gonna only have the monkey say the N-word, I That's guess. That's awesome. He's like, yeah. And then they won't say it, so they're killing themselves. <laughs> We've had a, a huge breakthrough in the AI, in the chip space. We have a monkey that can say the N-word. Yeah. Elon, so Matt Binder of, uh, also of uh, Majority Report, says Elon Musk apparently thinks it's concerning that an AI chatbot won't use a racial slur. And then Ben Shapiro, of course, in solidarity with his daddy, Elon Musk, says, I'm sorry that you are either illiterate or morally illiterate and therefore cannot understand why it would be bad to prioritize avoiding a racial slur over saving millions of people in a nuclear apocalypse. This is so yeah, stupid. Not going to a bomb. There's no bomb. This. Not a single person <laughs> on the planet is literally like, oh, wow, if the password is the N-word, I guess you can't say it. Like, no one thinks that. You are arguing, you're shadow boxing with a made-up situation uh, over a response to a hypothetical made-up situation, okay? It's, it's not so happening. It, it will never happen. And also, let's remember, this is just a fucking robot. It's been told not to say the N-word, Ben. That's I'm it. That's the whole and point. You, could, you know what, Ben? You could benefit from the same instructions. The entire reason as to why it can't, it's the highest priority for it to not fucking utter racial slurs or be a white supremacist is because of the the function that this will be used for okay which there are plenty of examples of white supremacist ai just you know use those then if you want fuck oh this is awesome this i love homie, this video dude this guy is such a king or yeah so, he, <laughs> so he's <laughs> really? been reincarnated really ethan i mean i love the whole shtick he's got yeah awesome and then like well, he's really got so this guy says he is the reincarnation of uh hitler Tyler hitler Adolf Hitler, dude. <laughs> and, and what's so funny to me is instead of having the Hitler stash, he got this big ass nose piercing <laughs> that steps in as the mustache because that's out of style. There's just something Hitler loves about covering this part of his lip. Hitler, dude. <laughs> this is this this guy's not serious, is he? Well, let's watch. I think just severely, you know, deeply sad and ill. Like that's just, which is most people on TikTok and on. <laughs> Social media in general, myself included. Let's watch. So I need to tell you guys a little something about me. <coughs> and you can call me crazy. You can call me whatever you'd like. Any name under the sun. But I'm very in tune with my past and my past lives and lifetimes that I've lived before this one. Mm -hmm. My last life just so happened to be going? a very infamous one. Me offing myself was one of the first memories I had from that lifetime. It came to me when I was five in my nightmares. You can see right where I shot myself, too. Yeah, I don't think scars transcend the... Uh, you're wrong. Vibe. It definitely does. Okay. 
I guess I'm not up. No, I believe it. This is this is Hitler. He's like, see, I have a birthmark on my forehead. Yeah. That and just so many other things throughout my life have connected me to my past. I think one of the funny, like what? What connected you to your past? The plushies behind you? I hate Jews. Like, I just, I think (laughs) this is so funny. Like, just sitting in front of your Funko Pop collection with your plushies behind you and being like, I'm literally Adolf Hitler's Uh, reincarnated body. I like it because Hitler had a creative, he had an artistic spirit. And so this guy thinks that in a modern day, this is how it manifests. Well, if this dude's actually Hitler, we need to get him. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of these we hypotheticals. We need to stop him before he yeah. rises to power. I'm sick of these hypotheticals where it's like, would you go back and kill baby Hitler? He's right here. He's back. Yeah. Uh, about Hitler. I'm not yet. Yeah, yeah. Say, oh, go get on your meds again, you nutter. I've been on so many meds and none of them have changed what I saw when I was five. So it didn't. <laughs> yeah. So it didn't hit. <laughs> yeah. Try something different. Keep one. trying. Keep trying. You'll, yeah, so he's. What, is that guy posting anything new? Uh, <sighs> Uh, I, I I'd love to explore his page. They're TikTok uh, obsessed, so let me uh, get their uh, account pulled up. Yes, yeah, so. I think I I think like we're both like <laughs> hyper medicalizing, uh, you know, behavior that would be considered uh, out of the norm. On the one hand, and also on the other hand. It's seen as like a way to, to seem different. Uh, only, uh, only kicked into overdrive by social media clout, and the endless desire to be the center of attention. I would actually like to ask. I want to talk to this guy. Can we reach out? Like, I want to know how being Hitler manifests in his daily life. Someone said in the chat that kid told the Holocaust survivors, "Sorry for putting you in a camp." <laughs> There's no way. Oh, he's remorseful. Okay. No, oh, that's no. actually. This that's, is a new Hitler. He's, he's, like, a, he's like the. Have you seen the other Hitler. chat? The chat GPI or GPT, whatever, of like uh, famous, infamous, uh, you know, dictators of the past or whatever? No. Oh, there's a. Okay, there's like a history AI bot, and you can like talk to Himmler and, and everyone else, right? Goebbels. Okay. And they are also remorseful. Oh, they're sad. Yeah, which is weird. It's like, no, these people were not remorseful at all. Why are you making it seem like that? You know who's not remorseful? Osama bin Laden. Mm. He died. <laughs> no, literally, him. when you talk to Osama bin Laden, <laughs> he's like, no, America deserved 9 <laughs> 11. Which I, I found that to be funny as fuck. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a little bit more realistic. The, I think. the Nazis are remorseful. Oh. Let's be real. So, yeah, they're, um, they may have been banned recently. Oh, he got um, banned. Damn it. It was too good to be true. Can you guys try to reach Bummer. out to him? Like, I genuinely want to ask him questions. They might have a new account somewhere. Yeah. Um, when I search for it, I'm so seeing lots of, like, up. duets with it. But when you click on the account, it just says this account. They got like him. This, so. Fuck. Oh, here, here. Wait, okay, so. Okay, here. Oh, this man really dresses like this. I made a new nose ring. My five, five of my favorite selfies. A TikToker that goes by the name of Felix Cypher's game, Mass Attraction. After pretending to be the reincarnation of German dictator Adolf Hitler. Fuck this guy, dude. Apparently Wait, he has, he has a, an egg kink? Yeah. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out. He has an <laughs> egg kink. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Not familiar oh, with the egg, egg laying kink. kink. Oh, Let's egg see. laying. Okay. I mean, I guess we can infer what that's that That's even means. weirder than the Hitler thing. What the fuck? <laughs> so where, but plenty, I just, of, plenty of young men think they want to be Hitler, but... Oh, people are actually trying to ruin his life. That's crazy. That she's like, yo, he doesn't have a job anymore. Fuck Nazi scum. He's not really Hitler, by the way. No, but he's, like, fantasizing about being Hitler. I, like, the, the Twitter <laughs> like video remorse- thing, <laughs> thing is so funny. From, he like, probably erased his account then because people were trying to ruin his life. I don't think this is going to help this person, but I don't know what could technically help this person. I think, do they even want help? I don't know. He said here, he believes you in eugenics, just not genocide. Oh, nice. Okay. Hitler light. Yeah. It's like early life, Hitler. I mean, there's a really easy way to have avoided all of this by just not coming out and telling the entire world that you are Hitler so some th- some people should stay in the closet. Yes. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. No coming yeah. out party for you. Felix. If you're if you're coming out as Hitler, you <laughs> should just keep that shit yeah. locked stay down. Stay in the closet, please. Yes. Uh, 
love about Hitler. All right, let's get on to some politics. The race to the bottom, GOP primaries. It's Trump versus DeSantis, the showdown we've all been waiting for. Trump um, debuted his new nickname, for Ron. Oh, so good. Meatball Ron. Fuck, so good, dude. Meatball Ron. Oh, finally, he's back, baby. That and what he said about Nikki Haley, he is so back. Oh, my king, my goat. <laughs> I still think he's snoozing on deep state DeSantis, <laughs> man. He's coming He's coming after Rihanna. He's being a fucking sassy bitch. Like, <laughs> he's just, he's going after celebrities again in the Super Bowl halftime performance and I stuff. Love it. She looked horrible. She looks fat. He's finally, he's finally like, you know, he, he's, he's taking off the training weights. Re he get epic yeah. fail. Rihanna gave, without question, the single worst halftime show in Super Bowl history. This after insulting far more than half of our nation, which is already in serious decline, with her foul and insulting language. Also, so much for her style. What what is he talking about? What what was? The I don't know who, who he's here? referencing as far as the stylist thing. Uh, the Chop Boys think that this is not actually Trump, but someone else who wrote this because like Trump doesn't know what epic fail is, which I kind of understand. Mm, he but does. The previous, he's become... but the, but the previous stylus uh, jab was actually like definitely Trump. Um, but wait, what is he talking about when he says that she insulted? She insulted half the country. Uh, probably because like she wouldn't let him use the Trump music. Uh, she wouldn't let her. She wouldn't let Trump use her music in his oh. rallies or something. Probably. Or like, you know, celebrities bright, like were all on their fuck Donald Trump shit in like 2016, 2017. Maybe that's what he's like Wait, no. talking about. Here, it, it's actually was something specific. And it... Uh, Rihanna spray painted F Donald Trump on a car at Cardia, a Cadillac Ranch. So he said, without her stylist, she'd be nothing. Bad everything and no talent. I want to talk to her stylist, bro. She's made a career of like spewing degenerate talent. filth while badmouthing America every chance she gets. Why is the NFL showcasing this crap? Rihanna should not be the halftime performer. Yeah, it was pretty funny because, like, given due to her, uh, you know, pregnancy <laughs> status, like, her show, like, her performance was, like, super tame. And even, like, Ben Shapiro and everyone else was, like, trying to make it seem like it was immodest. But like they couldn't really do it. They were like grasping for straws. Was to be like, so oh, look. everyone was like fully covered. The dancers were yeah. in giant sterile yeah. white suits. Yeah, they couldn't they couldn't really get her on that. So, you know, now they're like, well, it was boring. Which yes. is what we want, but also not this time. We don't Come want it to be So Don is going after Ron, and he this is on his uh Truth? Is this truth? Is yeah, he's truthing it. He's I I'm re truthing all of these as well. He's yeah. a mouse. Are you not on truth yet, Ethan? To tell you the truth, Dan, mm. I'm not on truth yet. What the? F Here is Ron to say you won't get demonic. banned like on TikTok. So, I believe in free speech on truth. Right. Doug Chan Lee posted. Here is Ron de Sanctimonious. It's funny and so stupid. Grooming high school girls with alcohol as a teacher. That's not Ron, is it? He would never do such a thing. So wow. he's coming after Ron, calling him a groomer and a pedophile, okay? Saying that he's a pedophile, which, by the way, very well might be. That is really fucking weird. If you're, like, 28 Wait. to 30 years old and, like, hanging out with fucking high school girls. Wait, what is the back? Is that really the true story of this photo? Yeah. Oh, well, that's actually good ass He was dirt, a teacher. He was a teacher, and I think, like, he was literally hanging out with, like, high school that's really students gross. at a party where they're drinking and shit. Except here's the thing, okay? This is a good line of attack. However, the reality of the situation is that most people don't think that that's grooming. Like, conservatives will not find that to be grooming, even though it literally is weird, and it is, like, more pedophilic than anything else. Conservatives would be like, whatever, they're fucking hot. I would as do that too. As long as they're too. 18, bro. No, like, they're, no, they won't say that as long as they're 18. They'll, these people want child marriages, dude. What are you talking about? Like, or Matt I Walsh guess... is literally on the one hand being like, trans people are, you know, destroying society. And on the other hand, in the same breath, he'll be like, a teenager girl is when she's most viable to give birth. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're freaks. They're like actually the fucking groomers, <laughs> not the queer people. Uh, this is her stylist, actually. He's a huge fan of this guy. Elijah. I don't think I don't uh, think that's who he's talking about when he says stylist. Oh, what is he? Is that some inside baseball? Team? I don't know. Maybe ASAP Rocky. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's on about. But okay, that's good dirt. I like how Trump is like he's a sexual predator, folks. Unlike me, 
Yeah, so I, there's no. I have done nothing wrong sexually in my so whole life. This is how you know the conservative <laughs> momentum is losing its juice, and they're turning into like Hillary supporters in like 2016, basically. Because here's what's here's what's really interesting. Okay, Bill Mitchell has been popping off, and and a lot of other like Caleb Hall, like all these like conservative commentators have been popping off at at Donald Trump, saying like. I wouldn't be speaking about grooming if I were you posting photos of Donald Trump with Jeffrey Epstein. And it's like, bro, you literally voted for him twice and we you've were, been defending him. It's awesome. Are you saying you're defending a fucking pedophile? We like, tried what's to show the argument? That to you guys, like, these photos existed four years ago. Like, five years they're, ago. they're literally like, you're, you, sir, are a pedophile and I voted for you twice. And I believe that you're the best thing that's ever happened to this country. And you are definitely a pedophile. Dude, I, this, this whole. Cl- this clash is going to be so destructive. I can't wait. I'm just, I mean, it's already starting. I'm enjoying it now. So here's the next one. He, this guy, Dong Chan Lee, is really feeding the tea. Magnanimous. DeSantis says he's glad violent Trump protesters are being arrested. He said he hasn't seen anything specific regarding FBI warnings about armed mobs marching on state capitals. Uh, I don't even know where that's from. That seems like a made up story, but whatever. Let's, who cares? But Go I, down. Yeah. Is there more? No, it's top- just, he's just mad that DeSantis apparently is glad that violent, specifically violent, Trump supporters are being arrested. And he said, what about Antifa and BLM run? Don't you care about them, you hypocrite? Uh, well, if so, here's another Dong Chan Lee original. <laughs> Why did this Trump's... <laughs> Quote tweeting somebody named Dong. Dong Chan Dong Lee Chan with Lee. a Pepe. Yeah, I emoji. wish he would do that on Twitter again. Fuck, man. I miss it. Because you're not getting enough. You, He'll there's be There's no back, juice right? on true social. Like he just he just keeps truthing to like five K people, you know? Max. He'll be back. Why did DeSantis vote against Trump's border wall? Good question. We need explaining here. Mm-hmm. 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 Trump said, Wow, if I knew I wouldn't have endorsed him. You didn't know. And we, he would have had to quit the race down 35 points. Yeah, I mean, it is true. Trump did juice uh, DeSantis up a lot. And DeSantis did almost lose to Andrew Gillum back in the day. Obviously, Andrew Gillum's political career unjustifiably was cut short when he was caught at Fountain Blue with a, a gay prostitute and a fuckload of meth. Uh, that's you know, a good time, that's the man. most Florida thing you could do. That's, okay. He's, yeah, he's just a good Florida man. Yeah, I just like there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever, let let him have some fun. But um, you know, Ron DeSantis almost lost to him. He won by like a margin of a fucking point. So, uh, you know, he's he's of course significantly more popular now in Florida due to copying Trump's steez. But I don't think that will translate to national prominence. Now, Meatball Ron came. That's the new. That's the new thing. Where okay. did that come from? What Before we get to this fucking freak, yeah, uh, he, I think uh, it was a it was a news story uh, saying that Trump can... behind closed doors to allies has been very upset with uh, Ron DeSantis and has been reported as calling him Meatball Ron. <laughs> Wait, what about meatballs though? So now I love this personally. Because, like, Ron DeSantis is Italian. Right. Okay. It's a li- oh, right. We t- yeah, it's a little just Italian. And he also kind of looks yeah. like a meatball, too. Yeah. Which is, like, exactly the type of shit that Trump used to do really well. Like, you know, calling people fat and stuff, even though he himself is fat. Like, he's very good at that. <laughs> um, and meatball. I think Meatball Ron is, is excellent. Marinara Ron over here. Um, yeah. Love now, that. what I find particularly funny about this, though, is that, again, conservatives have been saying... Bill Mitchell specifically has been like, you know, meatball is an ethnic slur, right? (laughs) And it's like, bro, you've lost. It's funny. (laughs) And if your counter to that is that like, "Uh it's actually an ethnic slur, an anti-Italian ethnic slur. When, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the entire Cuomo, uh, battle was like, fought over right remember they were goofing on him because someone called him fredo yeah the the, the fredo was an ethnic slur it's like anti-italian sentiment like everyone was understandably laughing at that because it's fucking hilarious objectively um right getting mad at that and saying that it's an anti-italian slur is not gonna 
not going to win you any favors. So true, actually. So here's, um, man, these figures are unreal. This profit, quote unquote, is starting to gravitate towards Ron DeSantis. These are people who would, were hardcore Trump supporters back before. Uh, this guy, Charlie Champ, claims he received a vision several years ago revealing DeSantis is the ultimate future is to have a position. His ultimate future is to have a position in the United States as president. So this guy had a vision. Why didn't he say it beforehand then? If he, he had was, a vision a long time he, ago. He, he, come on, son. <laughs> so obvious. So, by the way, he didn't want to disrupt the flow of time, obviously. Yeah. So these are these guys here. This is a famous guy. I forget his name, but Jim Baker. Okay, so he was a hardcore Trump supporter. He's a Y two K pastor too. Like also, he has has slop bucket on his fucking. <laughs> yeah, they're they're all counter. like they're all like apocalypse is it paint preppers. or slop bucket. <laughs> they're all apocalypse preppers. So of course, like they're constantly talking about how the apocalypse is nigh, and then uh, you know what a wonderful way to make money off of that. God damn it! By selling fucking slop buckets. <coughs> Hold on one sec here. So apparently we have some info on Meatball Ron. Um, it seems Trump just said it to the New York Times and then it just became a thing. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I like the meatball thing. Here. Pretty good. Yeah. This is his appearance, apparently. Yeah, so here is this guy. This also was one of the guys who was selling silver solution during COVID and got sued by the... I think it was the FTC that yeah. stopped them, yeah. which because it's the nanny state. I mean, what the fuck? You should be able to get, uh, you should be able to poison your audience. Bro, I have this sawdust that will cure cancer. Straight up. Okay, here he is talking about the. We need to watch. This is not a serious person. Just look at his fucking fade. Look at his. Whoa, that's that's sandwich. anti Mena. That because is literally is that is the most Mena haircut. Way. Okay, the man so looks like every a Arab what dude. The fuck, dude. Every Arab, every Arab teenager, all the way to like the age of thirty-eight, has this exact same fade. Okay, what? so what is it then? It's is it the beard? They put like it's like two plastic things that you put on your face that the fucking guy shapes up with. Okay, this man looks like a fucking we have. You have just you have just made fun of every Indian guy and every Arab guy on the planet. Okay? No, I have not. This is this also could this is like it's the Israeli beard. motherfuckers have it, this haircut too. No, it's the beard. What is going on with the beard? The beard and the haircut. The beard no, looks it's, like it's, it was it's a, painted it's a, on. It's a double feature. What do you mean? What's uh, what's up with the beard? The beard does not go along. The beard and the haircut go together. Okay, listen. This man took mascara and painted on this beard and thought we wouldn't notice. Like, it's crazy. Th bro. He's literally white Hassan Minhaj. Sorry, your beard is not on that level. No, I didn't say myself. I said Hassan Minhaj. Oh, sorry. I thought all Hassan. No, I don't yeah. have that. I don't have that. Hassan Minhaj does, though. No, but, yeah. Kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah. There's just a subtle difference in the beard darkness. It's this is the best. I love this shit. I I, I love this beard fade combo. It it's so hey, you're you're like an Arab fuckboy. Did they introduce him as Prophet Charlie Champ? They put yeah. respect on his name, boy. Yeah, God should have told him there not was, to get that fade. Honestly, there was Jesus, there was Moses, and then there was Prophet Charlie Champ, living prophet. Ha 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 ha! Went into where I saw two palm trees. And I saw one of them was planted in California, the other one in Florida. And I said, Lord, who are, Gavin Newsom. Who, what is this, these two palm trees? <laughs> he said, this palm tree from California is Ronald Reagan. This palm tree that is in Florida is Ron DeSantis. He said, Ron DeSantis. Everybody, he, God loves Ron. And he said, who the fuck is Ron DeSantis? Because this was years ago. <laughs> like, I don't know who the fuck that is, Lord. Just trust me. Remember this name. The Lord, the God sounds like a hillbilly. Remember his name, Ron Amen. DeSantis. You see this here palm tree here? Mm-hmm. Nice weather out there in Florida, California, like. I'd like to nominate one of these Bible Belt, but they just too dumb, boy. We need to oh, go geez. out to them. Florida, California. Mm-hmm. Or Ronald DeSantis. Ronald. Is the second has an anointing like similar Ronald to Reagan, Ronald, Re Ronald DeSantis. It's a holy name, Ronald. Just like McDonald, you know. He, he, Ronald McDonald was is said to be the first modern prophet. Dude, Reagan, and I saw, uh, 
uh, Ron DeSantis as a, as a tree of righteousness, that palm tree. And I saw it uprooted from Florida and brought mm. to Washington, D.C. Wow. And planted in Washington, D.C. Wow. And as the storms came, he was not moved. That's wow. right. There's, there's That's something right. about Ron DeSantis that we need to begin to pray for. We need yeah. to begin to look at yep. because his ultimate future That's is true. to have a position in the United States as the president mm-hmm. and be planted in Washington, D.C. And he would be like a Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I just want to say one thing Fascinating. before mm. we talk about how fucking psychotic this is. Uh, because like, I mean, this is like, you're, you're creating, like, you have millions of people that watch this and believe it, which is no so millions in- of people watch Jim Baker. Dude, these guys have like insane cult followings, what, what, not just did- Jim Baker, but like this kind of shit is not a small audience by any means. Well, Televangelists have major networks. Where does Jim Baker broadcast? Like where do people watch this? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know where Jim Baker specifically broadcasts this Can shit. Can you guys but, get some details on like his audience? I'm just I'm genuinely curious. Um, I don't know where Jim Baker specifically broadcasts, but a lot of these guys have like AM radio shows. Like it's like Alex Jones. People think Alex Jones has like a tiny audience because they don't realize how big his audience actually is because he has like AM radio shows that reach millions of people that are broadcasted to like millions and millions of people on their fucking daily commutes and shit. Yeah, I mean, but at the minute you have a dude with this beard line on, you lost. Well, my point was going to be that the guy he's, like, you know, hyping up, both Ronald Reagan and Ron DeSantis, like, they're conservative, right? But Ronald Reagan is, like, a Hollywood lib, okay, that turned into a a super racist, uh, neoliberal uh, devil man. But, like, Ron DeSantis is a Yale and Harvard Law graduate. You know what I mean? He went to Yale and Harvard Law. He was a Navy officer. Like, the absolute worst, most despicable fucking career choices you can make. And, like, things that these people should normally hate. You know what I mean? He's Everybody super hates elite. The yeah, he's a super, like, <laughs> cultural elite. <clears throat> yeah, he went to the Gavy. The Gavy. And, and became... And, and not only was he, like, a, a Navy person, but, like, he was an officer, too, which is, you know, ugh. So here it says, Jim Baker shows broadcast throughout the United States, Canada, and the entire world through multiple broadcasts on DirecTV, Dish Network, and Roku. Holy fuck. Well, d- is there any stats on his viewership? I've been looking to, I'm not seeing many stats, but, um, I I mean, I, I, he's on TV, he's on TV. And like Hassan said, uh, these televangelists, they, they have big audiences. So that, that is fucking really scary. That is really, really, really scary. Well, they're coming. It's insane that they're they're like, this is, this kind of unhinged commentary has a, a, a wide audience and is like, is not just like laughed out of every room. And the Republican Party does kind of capitulate to this kind of extremist uh, attitude. Well, I see, what I see is a very intentional move to start moving public perception and support to DeSantis. They're coming, they're rallying behind DeSantis. So this is going to be so fucking interesting to see this clash. Here's Charlie Champ, by the way. He is, if you guys were questioning his credentials, I'll have you know, he has... Uh, he With had, pinpoint accuracy, <laughs> presidential elections, catastrophic natural disasters, revealing government corruptions and exposing terrorism plots. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah, he, he knows what the fuck he's, he's talking like, about. He's like, they, they call him a prophet. Like, he legit is, they say he's like legitimately a prophet. You think a prophet would have a better website? Just saying. You think a prophet would have a better fucking uh, beard Based? and, and <laughs> yeah. hair routine? About, let's read about Charlie. I love Charlie. He's awesome. Let's see. He has been commissioned by heaven as a prophet to bring healing and revival into the nations. I'm here to bring healing and revival to all nations. Uh, watch out. Uh, this gay people, you're going to hell. But uh, all people in all nations, the Jews are definitely going to hell. But uh, anyway, all healing and revival. That's it, huh? Okay, well, there he is, the prophet, ladies and gentlemen. He knows. Okay, Squarespace as website. <laughs> Here's a video of him healing crippled people. Uh, and Why the sermon. raw power of God Heal manifest by the power of the Most High God. That's yeah. 
tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I had a dream, Lord. One palm tree in California. Of the Lord upon one meatball in Florida. Upon your knees. She's so Be sad, healed bro. In the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk right now. Rise up and walk. Walk in the name of Jesus. This man can do Run it all. In the name of Jesus. Oh shit, a little Ricky Tata Tata. That's the power of God. Hey, you, you know, it's you never get a follow up with these people who are miraculously cured by these preachers. Like, I want to see the next day that they're walking. You know, her ass is back in that wheelchair, sore as hell. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's get a week, you know, but following. But in that moment, her. Jesus cured her. Yeah. Amen, brother. This, there was a fucking palm tree in Florida, I tell you, man. This shit had all me kinds sad, of coconuts it, it, and it, shit. This just like makes me sad when I see stuff like this. <laughs> it's just so many people who have just been duped. Yeah, they're just fle- they're taking all the these poor people. They just they're already not rich, and then you have all yeah. these con men that just come in and basically like turn them upside down and shake them out for whatever's left. So that's our boy there, uh, uh, Charlie. Sh- Champ, good man there, good man. Nikki Haley is officially in the race. Who the fuck's that? Or again. It's She's time running for, for president. Watch out. That's, a, that's, that's our Do Indian queen. How dare you? Did I start this over? Yes, please. Oh, timestamp. No, I timestamped it to kind of the close, her closing sales pitch because it's a long video and it's just, it. she's just another Trump Republican basically. Wait, what's but, the. But she's um, an Indian woman. That's what's the, the like difference. ratio? Uh, it's quite bad. Is that plugins still not? I put it on your computer, so you could see, but I guess it's not working. I don't see it. Um, it is, uh, 300 likes to 2,000 dislikes. <laughs> she was the, right she was now. the governor of South Carolina from 2011 to 2017, which she mentions there. And, uh, you know, her becoming the governor of South Carolina proves that South Carolina is not racist, even though her name is Nikki Haley. And, uh, you know, she, I did not know that she was Indian until she like, uh, came out of the gate swinging with the, with the, I thought she was half Indian. When you say Indian, like, like, no, not Native India? American. Yeah. No, yeah. like okay. out of India. Okay, great. Okay. And, uh, you know, that <laughs> like her, her personally whitewashing herself in an effort to, you know, be more appealing to a broader audience, uh, does not factor into this consideration, but, um, anyway, regardless, she was the first female governor of Asian American heritage. Okay. We love that. So there's that. She's a girl boss. Yes. Um, she became the first Indian American member of a presidential cabinet. Okay. And she was a United States ambassador to the UN from 2017 to 2018. Quite credentials. And confirmed to the U.S. Senate. And um, uh, yeah, she was she was aggro on North Korean missile tests and stuff like that. Well, let's see her pitch. Maybe she's a viable candidate against Trump and DeSantis. Let's see. Yeah. Here it is. And when evil did come. Right. Police in South Carolina are looking for a gunman following a shooting at a church. Several in victims. Trump. We don't know the uh, severity. We turned away from fear mm-hmm. toward God right. and the values that still make our country the freest and greatest in the world. Mm-hmm. We must turn in that direction again. Republicans have lost the popular vote in seven Did out of the last eight. She is straight up trying to sell me a reverse mortgage right now, bro. It's so funny that she says Republicans have lost the popular vote in seven of the last eight elections. It's just you're so not wrong. supposed to say that. And then she's yeah. like, and I'm I, and I'm trying to make that. <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm add trying to make more, that bro. record uh, even worse. That's okay? right. This isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> I love that. I love that elections. for her. That has to change. Yeah, you're going to be popular. Joe Biden's record is abysmal, but that shouldn't come as a surprise. The Washington establishment has failed us over and over and over again. It's time for a new generation of leadership again, to rediscover target. fiscal responsibility, mm-hmm. secure our border, and strengthen our I wonder our who country, she's trying to get to vote for pro- her. White people? I trust them. Old ass fucking white, white people. Uh, old Strengthen white business our owners? Yeah, white people. Country, old white people. Our pride and our purpose. 
She does not have the juice. Some people look at America and see vulnerability. The socialist left sees an opportunity to rewrite history. Mm -hmm. China and Russia are on the march. Mm -hmm. They all think we can be bullied, kicked around. You should know this about me. I don't put up with bullies. Hell no. And when you kick back, it hurts them more if you're wearing heels. Okay. I'm Nikki Haley, oh. and I'm running for president. Bro, Bro uh, dude, what happened? Like, I, I feel like somewhere along the line, I mean, I've said this so many times at this point, but like everyone becomes a liberal in a long enough timeline. And that is like, is this like Hillary Clinton running for president? What the fuck do you mean? Oh, it's better when you have heels on? Like, who are you trying to appeal to in the Republican Party when you say that? She was wearing a palm tree pin. I don't know if you noticed that. Is that's isn't that the South Carolina? Uh, isn't that on the well, flag or something? Well, I don't know, but but maybe Champ misinterpreted the yeah. Uh, the he, did, he was seeing palm trees in his vision, so right. maybe you should cut back on the criticism. Isn't there, that the Buck, South though? Carolina flag though? Uh, I, I I don't. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's wearing the South Carolina flag. It's the crescent in the in the tree. <laughs> Actually, I want to move on to Roseanne. Our oh, you one... want to go back to not well one one thing we have to mention no 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 before you do that before yeah, you do that before you do that before yeah. we get to comedy yeah fuck and how the right is defending it thank god because it's under attack finally mm. uh let's take a look at what the real comedian of the right the only comedian of the right Donald Trump had to say about Nikki Haley do you have that i do yeah yeah Trump wanna, posted on social about uh, his queen absolutely fucking destroyed her dude holy fuck hey hold on sure. nikki haley is like I love the I love the Republican Party and you know these these elite monsters looking at like Kamala Harris and being like, you know what, we should have our own Kamala Harris, but this time, you know, make her white passing. Uh <laughs> right. like, just come. equally as boring, just no charisma whatsoever, going to lose in even South Carolina. Yeah, it's not loading for some reason, but is true social down? Can this I think be? It was on my I think it was on my okay, Instagram, here we I go. think this I guess. Nikki pull it up. Haley had a hard time making the decision to run for president because she has very publicly stated that she would never run against the president. He did a great job and who was the best president in my lifetime. I told Nikki to follow her heart, not her ambition or belief. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. She's pulling at 1%, not a bad start. Absolute daggers. I mean, it's so good. And right, he's right. He is right. Nikki Haley does not have the juice. What okay? is she? Yeah. She doesn't. So anyway, here... Tucker Carlson, thank God, is putting together a documentary about the death of comedy. And uh, they brought the big guns out. They got Roseanne out to do a set. And, you know. Yeah, I love I love announcing the death of comedy by liberals and then, like, having Roseanne be the defender of comedy when she's, like, single-handedly murdering comedy herself. Well, Fuck. here, hold on, hold on. Let me Every find time she clip. tries to be funny. You, um, you want to so, play Roseanne first or you yeah, want to play the Tucker do, Carlson So thing before first? we even watch that, Fox News who's saying comedy's dead, put out this preview of Roseanne Barr. Cancel, Cancel this. this. Wow, I've never, that's such an original concept. Yeah, no, I've never, see, I've never heard that before. She's the first comedian to ever make fun of that concept. So yeah. here, here's a preview of... Uh, this is not even remotely hacky. This is, this is trigger warning, everybody. Oh, yeah. Comedy is about to happen, yeah, okay? Yeah, thank you. you may want to The most away. offensive thing you've ever seen. Yeah, so here, it literally is, though. It is fucking offensive, but not in the way that, like, oh, I'm so <laughs> triggered by her words. Like, I'm just, un I'm angry when I see this stuff. I have a visceral reaction to this because it's just so painfully unfunny. Well, here is the rebirth of comedy, us on uh, Roseanne Barr. Everybody. Yeah, like, 65 year old psychotic woman wearing pigtails. I'm about to go on. I'm praying to God that he lets my brains work for once. And he, uh, she does not look good, me man. From <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why is she trying to do like a lolly with the? Is that the, the anime where like the young girls? She's doing a lolly, guys, with the pit. Okay. <laughs> that, I think that was her intention. Never mind. One night only. Thank God. <laughs> they Ladies limited the, the nuclear waste of, the of a set. Roseanne Barr. She's so goofy. She's How so goofy it? with it. Yes, we love Look at the audience. <laughs> we love you, queen. Wait till you hear the jokes. Thank you. Yes. A 200 seat auditorium. Thank you very much. Hi. I'm going to perish. You. 
I'm gonna perish. I'm gonna die if I. Oh God. Cancel what this. What a privilege it is for you to have me here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. 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 Bomb. This is the fire. Bomb. There, there Bomb. we go. No Bomb. 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 Hold on. There, here's the build up. You yeah, got the yeah, music? Yeah. Let's see. Let's You're about to drop a bomb right now. Yeah, I guess they thought they shut me up, but guess what? <laughs> anyway. Well, she doesn't have jokes. Well, you know what I <laughs> you know what I think? This is just like an hour of psycho babble. <laughs> and they, they this is the only coherent moment they could use for a trailer. Bro, she made Steven Crowder look like a viable stand-up. Oh yeah. You know how like Tim Pool has those other guys that are like objectively dumber than he is on his show right. to make himself look like a normal person? Sure. I feel like this is a psyop by the right to be like Steven Crowder's a comedian. Look, if Roseanne Barr's a comedian, so is Steven Crowder. Who's that one comedian that's just touring everyone? He just screams. He's from uh, Half uh, Jim Brewer. Yeah, he's my fave. He's Ugh. funny. Yes, ma'am. I love that we just hold on this. They couldn't shut me up. She forgot Where what she was doing. I said that the producer looked like an ape, and I stand by it. Oh, is that what she said? Well, that's what she got fired for, right? Not the producer. It was an Obama or, advisor. Oh, well, okay. Well, somebody. I she's, thought the bitch was wise! Yeah. Oh, yep. my God. I forgot about that. Yep, that was from that. Yo. It's actually, I the, the bitch okay, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Wait, bro. I think that was when she was on Rogan afterwards, right? Was yeah, her, no, having, a her having like a psychotic meltdown is, is pretty funny. Never mind. She, she made like <laughs> a She made like a bit. Out of it, like that's where those sound bites are. Got from. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, did that win? It? That must have done well in the soundbite Olympics in that year. That was before my time, dude. dude. That was that was the first year of the podcast pre Zach. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah, it was before my time. Wow. I'm gonna get really offended if I do not offend everybody. Where are my people? You have not even said a single joke for me <laughs> nope. to be offended. I mean, by. it's offensive that like you charged money to have people listen to this. Someone in the chat said that Ozempic face though, and that's a excellent joke, chatter. Good job. Ozempic. Ozempic. Yeah. Is that the, an old person medicine. The no, it's the fucking it's the diabetes medication that people are shooting up with so they can lose weight. Oh, you it's an appetite suppressant. I'll take some of that. It's Roseanne Barr featuring the audience. Like, that's yeah. the entertainment. It's just her clapping. <laughs> or the audience clapping. Don't stop clapping. She's not saying anything. Just switching between her and the audience. Her being like, get ready to get offended. It's Woo! like, dude, dude. I, some of y'all going to want to cancel me out here. Woo! I've always been upset at, like, look, I, I, I love comedy. Uh, I, I've been a defender of comedy 90% of the time on my stream I'm like having to describe what jokes are and why you should be able to laugh to like leftist people you know what I mean it's like a big part of my stream unfortunately okay and as a fan of comedy I've always been frustrated with like the TED talk style approach like uh, the Hannah Gatsby's of the world on the left there's a lot of like liberal comedians who basically try to undermine the basics of comedy by saying like comedy is actually a bad thing or whatever right and then this is the the right-wing version of that where you're just expecting claps for um an audience that agrees with you you're not like you're not like touching on uh you know the the bro forget the that hypocrisies or anything like that you're just said a single fucking thing yeah i mean she hasn't even done that yet but i'm saying like Dave Chappelle and Hannah Gatsby, Dave Chappelle's like newer sets when he's talking about trans issues and Hannah Gatsby talking about how comedy is immoral is basically in the same wavelength. This is even worse than that somehow. This but it is, it, is, it is destroying the, the very notion of why uh, comedy exists to begin with. I mean, this is practically a Tim and Eric sketch right now where it just switches oh, between boy, the audience. Man, there you are. There you are. Don't worry, I'm going to get them all I mean, it tonight. pretty much is just Tim, and, or, uh, Tim Heidecker's stand-up special itself. Right. The anti, all the anti-jokes. Yeah. But just unironically doing right. that. That's right. Anyways, anybody else been fired recently? <laughs> About to, oh, 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 oh! It wasn't recent. That was six years ago. <laughs> you need a new job. 
It's six years ago. Dude, literally not one joke was featured, and they had this super big ass fucking like beat drop for that one too. I thought she was about to say a joke. Well, there. Well, the other actually, video has some actual jokes. Yeah, yeah. In can it, we see the actual see jokes on yeah. the set? Because yeah. like the actual jokes on the set are even fucking worse. Not the Tucker Carlson one. There's another one. That, There's a one minute preview of a. Uh, no, no, it was longer. There's like a. Yeah, there's like a two minute, I think, right? Oh, oh by the way, the Benny, so Benny Johnson, the host of The Left Can't Meme, which a guy who definitely it. knows com comedy legend, uh, tweeted out com uh, comedian Roseanne Barr is back, baby. And then famous, he famous, not gay Benny Johnson, uh, wondering once again why there are so many gay cruise ads on his, uh, on his <laughs> computer. <laughs> right. Why are the gay cruises targeting me? Benny Johnson says. I don't know. They follow me wherever I go. That yeah. concept of reality. They've been living in a bubble forever. Asking questions have nothing to do with the real world. What is my gender, mom? What is my gender? Your gender is get a job. That's your gender. Fuck yes! 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 Woo! She, she can't, but she did. And they can't fire her now. She can't be fired by anybody. Is she allowed? Is she allowed to do that? She's not, but she can't be fired because she's on Fox Nation, bro. <laughs> I'm so, dude, you don't she's understand how triggered I am right now, dude. <laughs> she's actually, what I appreciate is Woo! she's the first comedian to make jokes about pronouns like that. Dude, I know, dude. That's why it's, it's cutting like edge. cutting edge. It's cutting edge when Dave Chappelle does it too, when he's like, uh, lol, attack helicopter. Talk. Woo! Oh, forever asking questions have nothing to do with the real world. Right. What is my gender, mom? What is my gender? Your gender is get a job. That's your gender. Dude, oh, thank God you played that again. She said it. What she said thinking? it. Ask, what is a woman? They don't know uh -oh. that. Nope. That one they're asking all the time. What is a woman? Nope. I'll tell you I what think Matt Walsh is asking. Yeah, that. yeah no one is asking. That's that. That. literally Matt Walsh. Literally, not a single person <laughs> is like, Matt. "What is a woman?" It, what is just... a woman? Somebody tell me. Yeah, that's that's just Matt Walsh because he's like, you know, is my wife a woman? He's he's trying to not get in legal trouble, but like, you know, <laughs> that's why he's asking. Right. Time. What is a woman? I'll tell you what a woman is. A woman is me. <laughs> Whoa. That was fucking crazy. That Big she, laugh. That's actually interesting because it's hard to tell. Uh, she looks, I mean, she looks like... They, they, they put a laugh track on this. After enough medicine and fucking... They, they, they put a laugh abuse. track on this. 100, 100p. Okay? Nah, those people are stoked. Yeah? You think they're just going, that's crazy. That is a woman. You're right. You're right, brother. So, so what is she... So what's the joke, right? She says, a woman is me. Are you, obvious, right? I mean, are, are you trying to deconstruct right? Are you trying to deconstruct this right now? Because yeah. there's no joke. The no, joke want, is no, like, I haha, to... I agree with her. I'm sure well, liberals, if they could hear this right now, hypothetically, would be screaming because well, they're so angry. Theoretically, I think the joke would make more sense if she, if people thought she was a man. So she's like, I mean, I me. guess, yeah, the juxtaposition would make it funny, but like, it doesn't matter because I'm telling you, Ethan, there is no comedy here. The comedy comes from the the liberals that they are imagining in their minds listening to this set and getting very angry because it like shakes their world view that's what they're laughing at the the hypothetical libs that are being owned so a woman is me so what's the offensive thing there is she just saying it she's willing to say it yeah, yeah, Set because it. like in their minds, it's like women don't like, exist. Libs think women. Is right, don't you're not. Uh, you're actually not don't say allowed women. to say I am a woman. Don't say anymore. it anymore. You're not yeah. allowed to say that. This is like dystopian comedy in like 1984. It's just playing endlessly on the TV, and everyone's like has Nodding. to pretend to laugh, otherwise they get arrested for sub subversion. Uh, so this is fire, dude. That. And by the way, this is the premium jokes that they put together for yeah. the trailer. That one they're asking all the time, what is a woman? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what a woman is. A woman is me. Oof. It's harder even the second time. That I'm getting progressively triggered. I'm so pissed right now. Fuck, man, I'm Don't mad. Don't you ever fucking say the W word to me. Yeah, I, I hate women. I, I, I think there's only one gender, man. That's it. That's, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Woman. Do I need to explain it? Yeah, Whoa, exactly. Man. It's in the name.
Hello. Yeah. Woman is, okay? A woman is someone who cleans up everybody else's shit. That's what a woman is. Oh. Well, trans women can do that, so that's actually pretty woke of her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's Gender cool. roles, I'm fucking pissed. Yeah. I don't even understand. She's saying, like, a woman cleans up everyone's <laughs> shit, like... Okay. Yeah. yeah, a woman cleans up after everybody. Okay, so fine. Let's let's epic. But that that cannot be her story. Her life is a story of her ruining everything and people cleaning up her mess. Okay, well, let, but let's see, let, let, let her cook. Let her cook. I want to hear. We're we're ruining she, her bit. She, she literally got fired for getting so fucked up on Ambien that she was doing like racial slurs on Twitter. Like you're not cleaning up anyone's mess. She's a man. This woman is a man. And that's on God. A woman is somebody whose boobs hang down to her knees with a prolapsed uterus from giving birth to five ungrateful little privileged <laughs> never had to work for anything in their whole damn life. I think she forgot the starting point of this joke. Yeah, I don't really... She just kind of like... I did think that was funny. I like the saggy tits and the prolapsed vagina as an image. I think that's powerful. Yeah, mm. why did she say that? She's a real woman. Real women's vaginas okay. go down to their ankles. Yeah, I mean, them cool. titties. Real, real women are are moms that hate their kids. That's right. <laughs> real women can tuck them titties up their vagina. Cool. <laughs> Who resent their own children? That's, That's right. Real woman. Is. Okay. Uh, that one was like a little confusing Itch. for me because real like, women. I don't even understand where she's going with that. But let's see. Maybe she has a maybe she has an end point to this. Okay. Let's hang down to her knees with a prolapsed uterus from giving birth to five ungrateful little privileged. <laughs> never had to work for anything in their whole damn life. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's I'm sure just her saying children hate, are privileged. Yeah. Just saying, I hate my kids. She started yeah. with like, you can't cancel me, woke lefts. I hate my kids. Yeah, I mean, that's like, this is old school comedy, though. It's like my right, bitch ass time, wife. Yeah. <laughs> Want to kill her? Right, like that right, that right. sort of thing. Right. So I guess she's doing a shout out to the old comics. Well, uh, she but from is a old. woman's perspective. She is old, yeah. Yeah. Real women can throw their prolapsed vagina over their shoulder. <laughs> Alongside <laughs> their saggy tits. Okay. That's let's right. See. What else? Real women can play jump rope with their titties. Well, I want to see. I want to see what else you got. Let's see. Like, come on. Rap. I want. I want her to deliver this epic final <laughs> note. My pronouns are kiss my. No, she did not. She did not. The, I, I, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm fuming or just shocked or I, I just. I've never seen that joke before. I've never seen you, you, that oh, joke. Oh, you mean? Wait, it's the. Wow. The the same joke that she made in the beginning, so that you what? heard it twice technically in the set. No, she said she pronouns is off. kiss my ass. Well, she also started off with another pronoun joke, if you remember. She did? Didn't she? Oh shit! She did. Yeah. It's very forgettable. Okay, well, she's the first one <laughs> in, in this comedy set to ever make that joke about pronouns. Yeah. yeah. What did she say? What What was it? She, my pronouns are prolapsed vagina. The the first pronoun the first. The first uh, pronoun joke was about what the kid's pronoun is, which yeah. is get a job. So yeah. their gender is get a job. I never heard that. Yeah, I've heard gender heard is yeah. kiss my yeah. ass. I love that you could say anything after pronouns. It doesn't have to be a pronoun, actually. Yeah. My pronoun is jump rope over my swinging no, hot guys are, twitties. These guys are like incredibly woke. They're like they're like fucking I like uh, Tumblr kids, basically. You know what I mean? Kids that like grew up on Tumblr. Where they're they're uh, you know advocating for the complete abolition of gender by uh, advocating for like you know what is it what are the what are they called Zeno genders or whatever what fuck uh, de or demi or I know what you're talking about what is no, that no. Where they, uh, there's like a neo pronouns there she's neo advocating pronoun, well not she I don't know what neo pronoun Geta I don't think Geta is advocating for <laughs> neo pronouns. <laughs> My pronouns are pick up McDonald's on the way home today. My pronouns are I'm watching Below Deck tonight till about 10 p.m. Then I'm getting in bed, wake up early tomorrow. My pronouns are... I respect her for... Well, I respect Geta for abolishing gender. <laughs> it's awesome. Good, good for Geta. Good for, good for job. 
He's a good man. Get a job. <laughs> no, he's not good. he. It's a girl. Okay. She's get a, a get a is a good man. She's a good man. Good. Get so, a is a good job. And just just to show you how fucking bankrupt. I I really think Geta's a good lady. You're doing it again. You're you're not respecting. Stop. You're, you're not you're not so respecting rude. Geta's pronouns. Yes, I am. Okay. Benny uh, Johnson, who is a self-proclaimed comedian who has paid to produce content by no right-wing establishments, literally said that this shit is hilarious. My pronouns are kiss my ass, dying laughing emoji. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> now this is that, funny. That is this unintentionally, is uh, you know, <laughs> Benny that. Johnson, unintentionally <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Benny Johnson goes, yo, the advertising on Military Times right now, bro, it's also, what's gayer, the Cruise ad or him? He's on Military Times. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the, large, the world's largest gay cruise. Yeah. What is he looking at? My pronouns are get on board of the gay cruise. My pronouns are nice abs, buddy. You want to come into my room later? Uh, I've got some meth. We but can listen, listen, hey. listen. While while Roseanne Barr is defending the sanctity of comedy, and uh, you know because it is illegal, yes. if we see you, if we catch you laughing, we will throw you in the gulag. Yes. Um. There's also uh, another man who's also defending comedy, Tucker Carlson. Yes. Objectively a hilarious person who definitely yeah. knows the joy of laughter. Uh, let's take a look uh, uh, on how Tucker Carlson is defending uh, comedy. Nothing funnier than a dude that wears a bow tie. I mean, he is funny looking. Yes. Yeah. He yeah, is funny is looking. The this is Got literally that. the fucking face of white privilege nepotism <laughs> baby with the he's like richie rich grown up yeah sexual fantasy he's so gooey he's so gooey let's shit. let's let's look at what he had to do he, he's like he's like inbred he did white. a whole documentary saving comedy yeah so here it is so, so that's the lead up uh this is all part the roseanne thing and this documentary it's all and part i got i got something comedy. to say about some of the comedians featured on this in a little bit after we watch it oh did you have the guy who was complaining that they used his clip all of them complained. <laughs> Everyone that's not featured in the documentary that was used as a clip were like, dude, fuck you, you fucking racist piece of shit. Yeah. Like, we, what the fuck Can are you, you talking about? Try to find that Okay, one. spoiler uh, alert, Ethan. You're spoiling it. I was spoiler. Gonna, I was going to do a big reveal of that oh, in a sorry, second. Just sorry. play it. Right, that was the most You're telling me just play it, Hassan? Yeah. Who are you? I know. But it's just, you know. <laughs> my, pronouns, my pronouns are just play it. Okay, well, do, but just play it. Tell me what are your pronouns. Please play it. <laughs> the most racist joke ever. Comedy is the hallmark of a free society. Okay. Wokeness basically wants to make comedy illegal. Oh, Listen, no. Any offensive Elon. comedian, we're just oh, trying to make people laugh. Okay, sorry. I, I can't. I can't. Free speech first is of all, dying. Like, first of all, Elon Musk, a dude whose comedy is literally just fucking reposting memes from 9gag, is yeah. in the documentary explaining what real comedy is. Well, I is. think Source Babylon B, I don't think Elon is in this documentary. I think Ari, on the other hand, is. It Dude, seems yeah. like Ari Shafir is, which, bro, by the way, your career washed. Is dead, washed, bro. Washed. By the way, he reached out to be on the podcast recently. Really? I said, fuck no. Or, oh, his manager. Fucking washed. It's probably, not, washed. Good. It's probably this not good etiquette to say that. No. But I said, fuck that Hold that this fucking L, idiot, Ari. Bro. God damn it. Go suckle on Joe Rogan's steroid nipples more, you bitch. <clears throat> Ugh, I'm so fantasy. fucking subversive. She, she, uh, she manages more than just Ari. No, and she's awesome. I love her. I just don't like Ari. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, she's great. I just don't like Ari. Keep them pitches coming. Just sorry. Yeah, just it's better people. Though. Respectful pass on just, Ari. Just Thank you so much. If you have better people than Ari, I'd be interested. All right. Because this is washed up as it gets, my friends. If he went on Tucker Carlson, if he actually, if this isn't just Any like, offensive if this is legitimately him participating, participating yeah. in the documentary, he is omega washed. Oh I, my I'm lord. I'm 98% sure that's the case because there's another clip I saw with a extended like part of the interview. Let me with hear him what he's actually about saying. All this, so. Let me hear. Nothing more Any annoying. Offensive comedian, we're just trying to make people laugh. Well, I'm just trying to make people laugh. I mean, what the heck? Doesn't Ari have a bit where he like went into like a black neighborhood and screamed the N-word? 
No, I don't common. know, but that sounds like something he would do. I don't. I'm I don't, just I don't, I don't trying know to make for people sure laugh. If that's the case, can you can you fact? But yes, that? he does a lot of uh, shock comedy <laughs> stuff. I know he, he is probably most famous outside of comedy circles for being the guy that whenever somebody beloved dies, he always pops off with a bunch of tweets about what a piece of shit they are and how he's glad they're dead or whatever. Yeah, he, Isn't he that lo- literally just what like SJWs do guy. though? Like that's like it actually is. SJW so shit. It is. So what happened? You're just like, you know, adopting the tactics of the people who want to destroy comedy? Like, oh, fuck. No, I, so, think he, I think he's trying to be brave, right? He's look, trying to like be counter. You do this. I know this. I want to be funny too, okay? And I'm not a very funny person. You do this oh, stop outrage You're very shit. Funny. You do this outrage shit when you have no other bits. You don't have like a clever bit. You don't have a clever uh, uh, way to like analyze the situation. So you're just going for outrage laughter. And, you know, we all do it sometimes. Ethan. Me? No. I've never. You would never do that. I, I've i done it as well. I understand it. It's just that, like, it, it's just, you can't make that your whole shtick. Like, it's just so whack. All right, let's see. Uh, we, uh, play the rest of the Ari Listen, clip. Any offensive comedian, we're just trying to make people laugh. There is a fear of getting canceled. Who are you? Nobody can speak Adam their Carolla, ass. the biggest right wing shit bag. Adam Carolla. Up yeah, another guy who wanted to come on the show. Who I just said fuck off to. So I'm brave and so important. So they're they're showing people getting like punched on stage and stuff. We, which uh, like as though there's like systemic attacks against comedians. Like comedians are being targeted. Which you know, I uh, I think it's like ridiculous to fucking punch an entertainer on stage. It's like no, everybody thinks it's psychotic. It's crazy. Everyone everybody. understands that. Everyone yeah. recognizes that. Like you know, and the people that think that that's uh, acceptable, they're irrelevant. They're like, you know, people chirping on Twitter. Who gives a well? And, and then the ultimate irony is most of the comedians they featured here as the brave uh, comedy warriors have responded to this by saying you don't have my permission you are racist fucking pieces of shit yeah. don't use my shit like even even dave Chappelle, who is like very transphobic I, I don't think he would be on board with like whatever the fuck tucker carlson is saying no like because uh, no he wouldn't be i mean we'll we'll see maybe he'll come out and, and make a statement or something like that but i mean this is a great opportunity for him to make something funny out of this situation but um yeah let's see well i don't know if you knew this but comedians are actually the um most oppressed uh, group in society right now. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a can I, sh- I can show this, right? Yeah, here's, um, here is uh, Ari, shame to the Jews, uh, Shafari. What's his name? I don't know. Shafir. Shafir. Ari, shame to the Jews, Shafir. He did, had a bit, The Amazing Racist, where he would drive around black neighborhoods like this. I'm just trying to make people laugh. No, it's funny. It, it's it, objectively. It's just. Why were they angry? See how angry they get. Yeah, psych. They're mine. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I, people are not like that was dope. But, well, some people actually are saying that about. I just I thought that it was like not that big of a deal when it happened, especially because the two, <laughs> both of those people involved, Will Smith and uh, and Chris Rock, are both. You know, they're they've known each other for thirty five fucking years, and they're both comedians. You know what I mean? Like Will they, Smith is a comedian. I mean, I guess Will Smith is a, he's not, he's a musician and a uh, actor. Rewind. Well, even they're then, mine. they're like, you know, they know each other. No, but the, 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 uh. Yeah. I don't know which one this is. What is that? I don't know. There, uh, yeah, it happens all the time. And here's the thing, you know, they act like it's some coordinated effort by libs that we could like all destroy, sit in, yeah, to sit destroy in, comedy. We sit in the nightclubs, we watch him for, we're policing for him to cross the line, and then we attack, baby. Nobody can. Speak. Jimmy Lee is the only. Jimmy Lee needs to be featured in this fucking documentary. <laughs> all right, let's he see. Let's see what else. Uh, I want to see the rest. Adam, Adam Carroll is a giant piece of shit too, by the way. Nobody can speak Not funny their mind. Oh wow. You know what's not funny? The one Being thing fucking that, sanctimonious. Nobody and can speak their nobody, mind. Nobody, nobody thinks it's funny when you got like a bunch of rich old white dudes fucking <clears throat> constantly mouthing off about how difficult it is that people are not laughing at their same fucking hacky bits over and over again. My Comedy is still thriving. Is please laugh. You, you, you see motherfuckers yell at Bill Burr? No, because he's fucking funny. Okay, just shut the fuck up and be funny. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the job that you have. Comedians 
are not like, uh, you know, the modern philosophers or whatever the fuck, okay? They can oftentimes uh, successfully make cultural critique that is objectively funny, show the disparities, show the contradictions in a humorous way. And comedy can be educational in that regard. Comedy can also uh, teach people the, the uh, personal lived experiences of, uh, of marginalized communities. Like, I love comedy, okay? It's important for me. This man actually uploaded a video called <laughs> Offering Black People Free Trips Back to Africa Racist Prank Gone Wrong. Um, he has a, uh, a specific uh, interest in offending black people, I noticed. He has a whole series of this amazing racist with uh, teaching Asians to drive, uh, a bunch of other different races. Does things. he do any Jewish jokes? I mean, yeah, he Jewish, does. He does. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. he does. That's yeah. good. good for you. All right. Equal opportunity. You're a good man. Why are people offended? Is this man skin exposed? Is that like just his fucking dick area? Like, is he wearing shirts? He's his cum gutters. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what a... is that outfit, bro? All right, all right. Let's let's. Uh, I want to watch the rest of this clip. Because uh, there's there's all right here. There's some good juicy stuff in there. Yeah. By the way, um, they go. Nobody can speak their mind in this one hour documentary airing on the most popular network on television. The one thing that people the power currently in players. power can't stand is being made fun of. Right. So Art they need to play by their rules. Right. You're not going to be able to say certain things on YouTube. You're not going to be able to say certain things on iTunes. Is that comedy? Boy, this what a disaster this is right now. It is now. Right. I'm not giving a TED talk. My job is to be funny. You're such a hack dude, loser. Dude, dude, dude. If you if you uh, are a comedian and you went on the Tucker Carlson <laughs> documentary bro. about how comedy's dying, you're washed. You There's are. no. You're so fucking washed. You're so mad that like. Motherfuckers aren't laughing at your jokes anymore. You've lost the sauce. That's it. Your pronouns are fucking washed up. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the people whose clips that they use. I'm not talking about the comics. Like the first guy yeah, that they showed yeah. is a, is a young black comedian uh, who who actually was in the right for yelling at the heckler. I know. And did a really good job of like dismantling yeah. the heckler, yeah. who was immediately kicked out. Okay, and. There are situations like that that he that Tucker Carlson put in his uh, in his documentary, I guess. It's and the and people participating. So far, I've identified I think three: Ari, Corolla, and this fucking little rat weasel. Like out of all of the people that they showed, you know, regardless of what <coughs> they've done personally, like yeah, Louis C.K. is probably like one of the only funny people, uh, or was Ignore. funny and is no longer. I think he also. But he's like, not a, a lot conservative of, shitbag. Yeah. Right? Well, just yeah. like showing his dick to people. Yeah, exactly. You know, is that a cons I guess that is kind of a conservative. Uh, yeah, I mean, pro attribute. On stage, comedy is supposed to show where these. Oh, there he is, Jimmy Dore. Let's go, comedy my legend. My pronouns are Jimmy Dore. Dude, he's <laughs> fucking. He is. Oh God, he. And that's that's a funny guy right there. The narrative is wrong. And then one girl goes, we think you're not entitled to be making some of the jokes you're making. This is the current state of comedy. Tucker Carlson Originals. Man, the death of comedy. So the guy that they Wednesday. showed, the, the Indian dude that they showed at the end, he also, I think he's like writes for SNL and stuff too. Like he shit this on, guy. yeah, he shit on being uh, used in this regard. Yeah, I just linked it. Yeah, Nimesh Patel. So here's the guy. Uh, yeah, here he is. He says, this is nonsense. Comedy is thriving. There was a reason I didn't do Tucker back in 2018. No one here is a martyr for comedy. Everyone featured in this trailer is selling out theaters and making money, myself included. Stop this fake victim BS. That guy um, was in the trailer. Yeah, and the other guy, the first guy, also <coughs> had something to say as well. Yeah, his, his was really funny. What was his response? Um, also, I his name. I was it. trying to find it. I love how they're dissing the loser comedians that were in this <laughs> documentary. I mean, he's saying everyone featured in his trailer is selling out theaters and making money. Ha, doubt it. Okay. Not Jimmy Dor. Some of the some of the people that are featured are, uh, you know, without their permission, but maybe some of the others not necessarily thriving as hard. Or maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe there is genuinely an audience of like unfunny divorced dads who fucking really want to hear someone talk about how woke these uh libtards are over and over again. See Roseanne's audience, man. Yeah. It was crushing. Yeah, if you guys find his tweet, this guy's, it was it was it was good. In the meantime... Uh, the other guy's Troy Bond, I'm pretty sure. If you want to find his tweet. Um, I think... Actually, you may not know this, I but... I talked um, to a student...
But Ted Cruz actually, I thought that was the first time. Yeah, I heard Troy it. Bond is the other guy. Troy has Ebola. Is his? Yeah, it's his pin tweet. Go to Troy has Ebola on Twitter. Got it. He says, "Hey Tucker Carlson, go fuck a green M M&M, and M, you open mouthed dipshit." It's funny that you are making a documentary about comedy considering the right wing has no idea how to do it. You use my clip without permission and I will now be joining Antifa in retaliation. Me too, Bran. Yeah, you got the the non-hacky comedians are all like, dude, why are you doing this yeah. documentary? Someone responded, it's funny because he showed your clip of what is likely a conservative woman getting mad at over your S-tier joke about a conservative. Yeah. Yeah, and he said, because I remember, yeah, he was like, the really funny part is the joke she was interrupting was a joke where I said I was the most anti, was the most pro-anti-Trump comedian. Um, And, uh, you know. So it was literally a conservative that got offended. Yeah, oh, for sure. Called. No, yeah. actually, no, no, it wasn't. She was saying he's racist. It actually wasn't. I remember the clip. Yeah, he's, um, I think Troy is, he's like, I think quarter black or half black. I, I'm not entirely sure. I remember like reading up about him in the, when, when that came out. I was celebrating Roseanne's brilliant comedy, but it turns out she may have stolen her joke. Bro, you know what this is? Okay. This is just like what Elon Musk was saying. Uh, originally, everyone was like, Elon Musk is a free speech defender. And we were like, no, he's not. And everyone was like, shut the fuck up. Yes, he is. That's why he wanted to buy Twitter. And we were like, no, he doesn't want that. He just wants you to fucking admire him. And look where we're at months later. Like, Twitter has exploded. The trending tab doesn't fucking work. Twitter barely fucking works half the goddamn time. Whoa. And he's firing engineers who keep telling him, like, yeah, your engagement is, like, lower than it was before because people don't really care about your nine gag memes. And he basically is like trying to reconfigure the platform's algorithm to only serve Elon Musk tweets. And that's at the heart of this. That's not a joke. This that is, is not actually, a, yeah, that's that a real thing that's happened. happening. And, and he was never a free speech actually, guy. If you can, can you paste that story here? These, I'll... these people do not care about free speech. They just think free speech is when you like have to sit there and laugh at what the fuck they're saying. That's their gripe. Their gripe is not being liked by, uh, a, a broader audience of liberals. That's why, like, it went from comedy is, is, you know, comedy is being silenced. You're not allowing me to, like, make jokes. And there was, like, uh, in the most heated time and, like, the, in the, at the final stages of the Obama era, there certainly was a wave of people that were just, like, literally filming comedians that were trying out their bits, their new material, mm -hmm. and being like, look at how racist this new material is. It's like, yo, that's how fucking comedy works. You have to try your shit, and sometimes it's not going to land. And if you're talking about tricky issues, if you're talking about, like, you know, delicate matters, if it bombs, you're going to look like a fucking asshole. But then, when you look like a fucking asshole, you never do it again, or you rehash your bit. You, you work on Thank it, right? Thank you for defending me, bro. Yeah, and the point is... <laughs> exactly. The point is... Like there was a, a there was this like kind of movement, but most people don't give a shit about it in the real world, right? Oh. But these guys are still riding the wave of like right. uh, trying to counter that by being like, no, 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 you're not letting me be funny. It's like you're just not funny, dude. You're not funny. It's not comedy is not dying. You're murdering comedy by you're being good. just unfunny and constantly fucking complaining from a privileged position about how like people are not laughing at your jokes. And it's not and this funny. must mean comedy is dying. <laughs> okay, so. It turns out Roseanne may have stole her joke from one of the best that's ever done it, Ted Cruz. I talked to a student recently at one of our woke college campuses who said she is required in every class to introduce herself and to give her pronouns. Mmm. Ooh. Well, I'm Ted Cruz, and my pronoun is kiss my ass. That's crazy, bro. That that's crazy because they 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 never heard this joke. Wow. And Benny thought it was so funny he had to retweet it. He goes, "Bro, my pronouns are kiss my ass." Bro, the, these are Ted the Cruz, reason why huh? Ted Cruz and Roseanne Barr have the same joke and like half these fucking washed up hacks have the same joke is because they're not looking for laughter. They're not trying to get someone to go, "Oh, I never thought about it that way. That's pretty funny." They're trying to get this. Okay? And the moment that you're seeking applause rather than laughter to make people laugh at something, that is objectively funny that they didn't think before, that's the moment you've lost. You're not a comedian anymore. You're just trying to do a fucking TED Talk. Okay? You're looking for validation from a group of like-minded individuals, and that's not what's supposed to be funny.
You know what's funny? Farts, okay? Farting on a dog. Very funny. Objectively okay. funny. I doesn't mean, have to okay. be brilliant. Doesn't have to be fucking uh, incredibly smart or, okay. or, or have like this oh. ideological message behind it. Or George Carlin, you know? Okay, so so that's your idea of comedy, is on farting dog. on dogs or something? I, dude, have you ever seen a video of a, a guy farting on a dog? It is objectively hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, see? He's right. Okay, I mean, it's He's better right. than He's what... Right. I mean, it's better. I mean, it's be definitely better. I'm just saying that, like, it doesn't have to always be <clears throat> smart. It doesn't have to that. always be intelligent, but it can be. We spent 30 minutes on Ethan eating McDonald's uh, yesterday. Bro. Well, that's and people art. ate it that's up. That's avant-garde. Well, his comedy is art. That's what I'm saying. That's what I always said. Mm -hmm. I know we're out of time. Do you have five more minutes? Because I want to talk about this, actually, what Elon did, which is a real thing. Sure, let's I'll do blast it. through it. Because it sounds like you're you're um, exaggerating when you say that, but you're 100% not. I'm not. not. I, yeah, that was a real news story that happened this week. So... Elon's cousin sent an urgent message to Twitter engineers Monday morning. We are debugging an issue with an engagement across the platform. He tagged everybody on Slack. Any people who can make it to the dashboard and write software, please, can you help solve this problem? It's please. very high urgency. If you are willing to help out, please thumb up this post. Here's the problem. Elon Musk's tweet about the Super Bowl got less engagement than Joe Biden's, despite having more followers. He is washed. Sleepy Joe. Biden's Out tweet, in which he was uh, supporting his wife and rooting for the Eagles, generated 29 million impressions, you guys. Musk, however, tweeted his support for the Eagles, and it only got 9.1 million. And he was, we were wondering why he erased it, because it's so fucking, like, beta and weird. Well, he also said, go Eagles. He didn't even say, go birds, like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> he tagged <laughs> them, like, the team is going to be like, yeah. hey, Elon mentioned us. Go at Eagles? Like, you're a dumbass, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> so why the American flag it's emojis and not the eagle emoji? I, like, it's right there. Because he's, he's a phony baloney. Big fan. So he deleted the tweet because he was so embarrassed with the low impression count. And Elon, let's be honest, some tweets aren't great. This tweet adds is literally adds does he nothing. Not, also, does nothing. he not understand that, like, does he not understand that, you know, this is going to be, you're alienating half of the audience automatically by taking a side on the Super Bowl. Joe Biden supported the Eagles, and he got more impressions. Hassan is clearly a bug in the system. It's just. So after the game, Elon Mad about his low impressions. I'm mad about Joe Biden supporting the Eagles. Did this actually happen? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. disgusting. His yeah. wife and, apparently. And uh, impeachable, in my opinion. Well, it's his wife. It was No one wife. should support Philadelphia. 29 million impressions? Now that's a lot. This man I can respect. He's juicing. This Elon, juicing. 9 million impressions? Cringe. Yeah, so Elon flies back, angry about his low impressions, back to the Bay Area to demand answers from his team. Within a day, Twitter users opened the app to find Musk's posts were being pushed to the top of their timeline. A lot of people noticed that. It's because Twitter deployed a code to automatically greenlight all of Musk's tweets, meaning his posts will bypass Twitter's filters designed to show people the best content possible. The algorithm now artificially boosts Musk's tweets by a factor of 1,000. In a new, yeah, they used a new method like that, that they didn't have beforehand. Um, specifically, like they tweaked the algorithm specifically to show Elon Musk tweets. I didn't see a single one, by the way. I, I really, yeah, I've never, yeah, I, I don't it? actually, I don't follow him. The thing is, it, you it don't doesn't have to me follow either. Him. Yeah, anytime anyone you follow interacts with him, it shows it. I don't yeah. know why I didn't. I was, I was wondering that. Like, I didn't see a single fucking Elon Musk Good tweet. I you, felt kind of out of no, but like, I also kind of felt Who's like I was him, not. Man. I follow him just because I might be getting singled out. He yeah. might have. Uh, he does he have you blocked? Uh -huh. No, but I have like I have interacted with him a lot. Like I've I've you know yelled at him a lot on Twitter. That makes it so even weird. Like a hater list, huh? Because I don't follow him. And the day after this, like whenever it was earlier this week, I, I noticed it before the story even came out that like half my feed was his fucking tweets. So I just I love that Elon Musk is just consistently proving that uh, <laughs> we've been right all along about Elon Musk, and uh, and it's just like a petty. 
thin skin, narcissistic, egomaniacal billionaire. Also, so that took beta like, to modify the algorithm because yeah. he's butthurt. Like, hello, why are you guys looking up to this Make fucking better insecure loser? Because they are just as insecure and fucking dumb because it all so comes from, it's not about free speech, it's about wanting validation. That's so like 90%. Bro. That is 90% of the motivating principle behind all of these fucking divorced dads that are like, yeah, fuck the libtards, you know, just, this is just like my daughter. Uh, whether you're like a grandfather who has been, uh, out, you know, pushed aside and your grandchildren no longer want to talk to you because you keep saying racist shit, or whether you're like a divorced dad who had to leave your, uh, your wife and children, uh, it's just the same animosity and the same resentment that they feel towards liberalism. It's not them. They have ideas. They're Americans. They are exceptional human beings. They're snowflakes. Those ideas are unique. They have to be heard. And not only do they have to be heard, they have to be consumed and appreciated mm -hmm. just by the sheer virtue of you thinking it and saying it. And they cannot comprehend a world in which people are just going to go, no, man, you're a fucking idiot. Like, your jokes are not funny. You're kind of stupid. You're kind of racist. And we don't fuck with that. But they can't comprehend that. They're like, no, there must be a systemic reason why people think that my, my posts algorithms are, are not getting funny. crushed. Cat Turd is another example of this. He's just like constantly talking about fucking poop like he's Mozart. Who's Cat Turd. Cat Turd oh, is another God. like, uh, you know, Leftovers. conservative, Florida conservative meme account oh, okay. that's like His constantly talking crushed. about shit. Oh, okay. And like eating shit and sucking shit and all this other stuff. And he's like, yeah, my algorithm is, uh, you know, really wonky. Elon, can you take a look at this? And Elon's always like, concerning. I'll take a look immediately. <laughs> he does. Earth. He loves all the, the fringe conservative freaks on Twitter. It's just so, these people, ironically, not to sound too much like a fucking boomer, but these people have not been told to shut the fuck up. They are, they just like, they have never understood that like they are not shit. Okay, like Zoomers, Millennials, whatever, like the, the generation that came after the baby boomers and Gen X, they have constantly eaten shit their whole lives. Mm -hmm. So they kind of like, you know, they're, they're angry, they're resentful, they're, they're upset at the system for understandable reasons. These guys that come from a infinitely more privileged structural background as a consequence of, I, I don't know, the GI Bill or, or all of these other like social amenities that were offered to them unconditionally mm -hmm. at a time when America had a 90% top marginal tax rate mm -hmm. cannot comprehend that like society is actually no longer designed for them that like their jokes are not funny they're just fucking old and washed but that is really dark to to cope with so instead of coping with that they're like well no 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 reconfigure society back to a point where like everyone laughs at me and loves my jokes about my bitch ex-wife or my gender uh, being kick your ass Hating my, my kids. Ass. So he's artificially boosted so that his tweets rank higher than anyone else's. Uh, this was no accident. So this was all reported and confirmed by Platformer, who first reported on this after talking to employees at Twitter. Musk threatened to fire his remaining engineers. If they didn't build a system that ensured Musk has all of his tweets published to the entire Twitter platform. Musk has been obsessed with the amount of engagement his posts are receiving. Last week, Elon fired one of two remaining principal engineers at the company after the engineer told him that views on his tweets are declining in part because interest in Musk has declined in general. After the code was written for Musk's tweets to be pushed on the timeline, Elon tweeted out this tweet because people were starting to notice and they're like, why the fuck? is Elon's tweets all over my timeline. And so he does this, and people love it. I, I, he's like, yeah, I, f I did it. He's like, yeah, I changed the algorithm because I'm insecure. And this gets 1.4 million likes. Oh, well, that's because it's pushed to everyone's feed. This tweet had 10 quadrillion uh, impressions, so congratulations. Hi. Elon Ma. Yeah, so, um, uh, hmm. so that story is real. And it is very, very embarrassing. Real quick, um, before we go, since comedy is dead, this is Jim Brewer, former cast of SNL. Um, uh, he used to work with Dave Chappelle. He made the video Half Bake or the movie Half Bake. This man is doing tours with the conservative media, and he is very funny. Dude, I love yeah, Jim we, Brewer. Just this was one I, I pulled from the doc from we we watched <laughs> this like six months ago. He was actually um, opening for uh, Don Jr. in this clip. 
Okay, the the greatest comedic duo mm-hmm. of all time. Yep. He's warming up the crowd. Take a look at what uh, conservatives are calling uh, comedy. Like Don Jr. is Don Jr. is really interesting to me because, like, dude, you have daddy issues and you do coke. Like, you have like three, two of the three main markers of what would make a good comedian. Like, how did you fail so much? <laughs> That's right. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. You Never just need like deep. Up. A deep desire to also want to kill yourself is like the final, I guess that's the, that would, that is what would make the magic I mean, recipe I, for a good okay, comedian. See, I'm not sure that's not there. I've seen his interactions with his dad. Anyone tell me, first of all, he sounds like Kermit the Frog. Make it fun of I'm do this year, and uh, the way we depopulate the world is in the city of Eden, and uh, first we'll go to Africa and get He's killing me. Let's try America. He wants to depopulate. You know what the word depopulate is? It's a very nice word for murder. Dude, that's funny. This is what blows my well, he's got a lot of money and he really gives it. He gives it to charities. <laughs> Is the power of money. Money is driven by greed. Damn, dude, he's, he's popping off. He's he's wow. tearing that tent down. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we're we're done here, but there's one more I want to show you. Uh, just to okay. give him his due credit his- as the great comedian <coughs> he is. You know what a cockatoo is? A cockatoo. Like, mm-hmm. Right. Because he looks like a bird. Who looks like a bird? Who's he talking about? He's he doing, I don't know, but he does. He's doing the cockatoo impression. Like, a lot. It's physical comedy, dude. Come on. You understand that, Ethan. This is good stuff. And that, that's what everyone's become. <laughs> The cockatoo. Little cockatoo staring at the screen. <laughs> Facts and figures. Facts and figures. Oh, Dr. What? Fauci. Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci. Right. I was doing that a couple years ago. He's right. I was. Yeah. Walking around with cockatoo. Trust the science. Trust the science. Yeah. Okay. And he's a, he yeah, take, comedy is yeah. You would think comedy's dead. Yeah, like if, if this is all you see. Specialist numbers going up, numbers going up. One mass, two max, fascinated, double. Fa- <laughs> if you're if you're a right wing guy, this is all you watch. Then yeah, you'd be like, yeah, he's right. Comedy is pretty fucking well, dead. You, yeah, I mean, if you <laughs> that okay. one was actually pretty funny, just in how painfully unfunny it was. It it, it got me laughing. The man I will give him bit that. was a cockatoo. Yeah. <laughs> Super into character, and you know, it's pretty if you, good. If you've just been watching, um, Jimmy Dore, maybe this guy is fucking. This is a step up in all time great, sure. all time great. Yeah, he's the right. goat. Yeah, these there guys it is. are the goats. So thank you, Hassan. Nice to see you again. Welcome back. Nice to have you back. We're just only get, comedy. It only gets better from here, folks. That's right. Yeah. As we inch closer to the meatballs. Versus the diaper. That's what I call Trump, the diaper. I don't know. Because he looks like he wears a diaper. How dare you? Diaper Don. He just has a fat <laughs> Diaper pussy. Don. Diaper Don. No, he has a fat ass. I like to tap that for sure. Yeah. He has, he has a His juicy... ass is probably so messy, dude. He has a juicy ass. Yeah, he's probably Because <laughs> he eats like McDonald's. He's definitely leaking. Yeah. You know. You know that ass is farting. I'm sorry. But I'm into that, actually. All right, let's hear that outro music. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. See you tomorrow to all my super troopers out there. See you guys tomorrow. All right. Have a great day. God bless.